but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Yeah, you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. up guys it is wednesday night one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about which of course are aliens conspiracy the paranormal the government academia the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the overall feeling that we live in the upside down We go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, and we are streaming live on DLive, YouTube, and Facebook, broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Do you want to be part of the show tonight at any point? We always do this show live. We've always done this show live, even way back in the day when nobody was listening to us. We were doing it live with an open phone line because transparency is an important thing. If you disagree with me, no problem. If you want to show feedback, no problem. That's that's part of the deal, right? You can uh, you can dial a phone number, which happens to be this particular phone number. I'll put it up on the stream for those of you watching on uh, the alternate platforms here. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can also join the Discord at TroubledMinds.org, the official website. That's TroubledMinds.org, the official website of this show. And uh, again, don't... Uh, uh, don't mind the uh, under construction. We got lots of things changing uh, with the podcast and some other stuff. So uh, don't you know? Don't worry about the mess. Excuse the mess. The important things are at the website. The phone number is on top. The Discord is on top. That's what you need. All right. Before we talk about what we're going to actually, before we get to what we're going to talk about, how about that? That's probably a better way to put it. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, see if we can actually get to Mars tonight. Uh, beep beep beep. Earth to Mars. Ash, do you copy? Earth to Mars. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, uh, humans. Un- unbend that antenna, man. You sounded a little, little, uh, little sketchy there at first. But you, you, you came through. You came through. How are you, my friend? You know, I've accomplished things your governments can't. Okay, Mike, I, give me a little break here. All right, it's a little hard running off of a couple microwaves and some toasters and some leftover drones that I shoot down. <laughs> 
from 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 the uh, Jeff Bezos raids. But no, it's great. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. Glad, glad to be here. And uh, I'm ready to talk about uh, maybe not too crazy. I mean, crazy stuff, but I guess crazy normal stuff now. That's normal for us, right? So, so yeah, just glad to be here. Right on. So. On. So, uh, so we were, uh, Ash and I were kind of kicking around the idea, you know, uh, with the delay back and forth to Mars, by the way, isn't it impressive? It's like a three minute trip to Mars and back. And we're, we're doing this kind of time travel style. So Ash actually is anticipating what I'm going to say and answering six minutes previous, just so the signal gets here right on time. So it takes an unbelievable amount of precision to get it all dialed in just right with the time travel and the warp gates and all the things, but we get it done just for you guys. So, uh, I appreciate you working with me on the technology there, Ash. But uh, hey, man, hey, man, we, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. In, in any no, case, no problem. I have an <laughs> I have an AI that helps me. Okay, and I call her Martha. So she's an expert at uh, anticipating what you're going to say, Mike. With lots of data, lots of videos online. The other thing she does is she just belittles me and just you know cuts me down, says off cuff remarks, just like any normal marriage. Oh, perfect. Sounds good. So, sounds very comfortable. Uh, okay, so so Ash and I were kicking around some ideas for the show tonight. And it turns out, uh, you know, every time Ash is on the show recently, we've been talking about really, really weird stuff, the maybe juice, right? So we thought maybe it was time to look back at uh, the, maybe the world as it's happening, the world as it's unfolding, the news cycles uh, that have nothing to do with UFOs, the news cycles that have nothing to do with aliens or uh, the, the Galactic Federation or anything of the sort. Uh, if you've noticed, um, there's a whole lot of weird stuff going down, right? Uh, specifically, uh, let's just kind of throw a couple out there to really get the conversation going here. Uh, but the we had the pipeline hack, right? And we had the uh, fuel shortages back uh, back east. Uh, we had this uh, this new thing just happened with the uh, they hacked this uh, this meat processing, like one of the largest in the world or the largest in the world. So now there's going to be like a meat shortage. All kinds of stuff going on, right? And it it certainly seems to me that if you start, well, let's say creating scarcity, creating scarcity, uh, I think it kind of falls into line with a, a bunch of things, uh, specifically Agenda 2030, specifically uh, Agenda 21, as it used to be known, uh, Claus Schwab in the World Economic Forum. You know, it just it seem, it just seems like, wait a minute, okay, so it's like we didn't have enough artificial scarcity as it is for the Great Reset, but now we have these, quote, hackers, these hackers that can now, at the snap of a finger, the drop of a dime, create even more artificial scarcity uh, because, well, they bottleneck resources because they, you know, pinch down the computers and say, well, now... You can't log in to get your Happy Meal, so people go without Happy Meals. You know what I'm saying? It's weird, is it not? This is a weird thing that's going on, and uh, times they are a-changing, are they not? I- I'm sure you're watching some of the news up there uh, from Mars, Ash. What do you think about all this stuff? You know, it just it just <clears throat> you know it just reminds me of the of a saying. There's something comes to my mind. It's problem, reaction, solution, right? And that's just kind of the uh, uh, an execution that governments do. It's just a tool that, that gets things done. When you have a population, you want to make change. And they're usually not going to accept it. So you got to like shake the fishbowl, right? And see where things settle. And as they do settle, you steer them in the right direction. And it just feels like we've been sh- shooken up for a while. And so you, you made some great points. You know, we got the, the Agenda 21. You know, a lot of people... Uh, I've just been seeing this a lot more with the Great Reset, Agenda 21. I, they don't talk so much about Agenda 2030, but I've been seeing a lot of people being aware of the Great Set, Great Reset and making these parallels, uh, which is really um, it's interesting that it, things are going. But what else is also going on? Like, you know, do we have a Cold War with China? Are we are we are you know, you can't invade each other anymore. So maybe there's some sort of psyops economic warfare going on. I have a list of a bunch of stuff that happened between, I guess, just over the last few years. You know, there is a uh, Brexit the Harvey Weinstein thing, right? You know, with the sex scandals, uh, the all fires in Australia, um, uh, the Russia orange man bad thing, North Korea dictator is he is he still alive? Right? Remember when he was he had a heart attack and he disappeared? We haven't heard anything about that. 
Twitter got hacked. You remember when Twitter got hacked? <laughs> These are so many things that Space Force was announced. Toilet paper runs. COVID. George Floyd BLM riots. Antifa stuff. That was like literally like billions of dollars of damage across all the cities. We got COVID. The rush for vaccines. The Pentagon if admitting UFOs are real. Uh, Bill Gates and Fauci being like godsends, you know, like our dictators and and and, and, and like our freaking religious priests. Uh, out of nuts spending, hacking pipelines, lab leaks, and 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 now we have meat hacking as of today, and some Fauci leaks. I mean, it's just been insane the last just two years, and I literally cut out like a hundred things. <laughs> like otherwise, I would just be going for the next ten minutes. I'd be like, hey, so, we're out of time. We got to take a break. The list is too long. <laughs> no, no. And so <laughs> if you guys haven't been paying attention to the news, and and I don't blame you if you don't. I really don't blame you because it, it is just a crap show. It's it's just an unbelievable uh, waste of time in many cases because we know they're lying to us, right? Uh, I don't know about lying, lying about every single thing that comes out of their mouth, but definitely the spin the twist the twirl and the uh triple lutz the triple lutz of uh of uh journalism means that uh you don't ever get it straight okay and so so with with all that said if you've been paying attention today in the last 24 hours like ash mentioned uh, i've got some information on this so i think that we need to uh maybe discuss some of this because we can again we can we can, uh, look guys we can discuss this stuff again can you believe this it's been approved by the technocrats and so it's in vogue again and we can talk about things like, oh, I don't know, the lab leak hypothesis it's being called now, right? When we talked about it, Ash and I, back in January of 2020, guess what? Well, we got copyright strikes, we got shut down, we got this, we got that. Problems, right? It was nothing but problems because, of course, you couldn't speculate in those terms. There were no actual officials stepping up saying, oh, by the way, this may have happened. Well, guess what? It's okay now because the powers that be have deemed it okay for us to talk about it. Now think about how horrifying that sounds, right? Talk about Orwellian thought police. We're not even allowed to have our own individual thoughts and speculations, or as I call it, the right to be wrong. We're not allowed because of course, if we are, we're shut down. We're labeled terrorists. We're labeled conspiracy theorists. And once you jumble it all together and throw a 17th letter of the alphabet in there, you can just smear us however the heck you want. Left, right, up, down, the other way. It doesn't even matter. But notably, some interesting things have transpired. Specifically, a FOIA request came out recently going after Fauci's emails. Fauci's emails. Let's talk about this for just a little bit, Ash, because I think it's important that uh, all, all of the things from the top doctor in all the world, the bestest doctor in all the land, right? He was shooting it straight. Well, except we noticed he wasn't. We were calling it out the entire time. And now we have emails that have surfaced where it seems like, oh, by the way, he was, uh, he was lying. He was lying about quite many things. And it's still coming out. I've just pulled a couple here that we can talk about specifically and how this, this, again, right? Like you believe the government, you know they're spinning things. You believe the media, you know they're spinning things. Like what kind of world do you live in? Like, th this is unbelievable to me. But anyway, so, so the FOIA came out of all these uh, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci's emails, all right? And, of course, there's some implications, right? Some, some, uh, some embarrassing things, and uh, he's got a book, a book that just went for pre-sale on Amazon. I'll pull it up, and we can look at that, up and look at that in a sec. But uh, it, it went for pre-sale, and then it was pulled off of the pre-sale because, well, the timing seems weird, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> this is this is this is all just crazy, like crazy stuff, crazy sauce. Anyway, uh, so so I know you've been watching a little bit. Ash, did, did you get to dig in? I know it's kind of short notice because this stuff is just hitting. This uh, Fauci email stuff. Did you get a chance to look into any of this? If not, it's cool. I got some here. No, yeah, uh, a little bit. Um, just basically getting him on record. Um, it wasn't super juicy that I saw. Basically, the stuff where. You know, he was caught based like saying one thing to the public and a hundred percent saying another, right? Like in the in the privacy of his own home or in the privacy of his own email, I guess. But you know, before we even get started on Fauci, like, man, are they are they sacrificing this pawn piece or what? God, like the um, I've seen so many clips of um, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, Rand Paul. 
uh, drilling that guy. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, something's going to happen to him. Other people say nothing's going to happen to him. And, and I don't think anything really will happen to him. But I think he's he's about to lose his clout. I don't think he, I don't think he's going to be able to advise anyone after this stuff. And um, it was already almost at critical mass. So I, I imagine these emails will push it over. So let's hear more about it, man. Yeah. OK, so Share we're still t- me. We, we will share some of these emails. Check this out. So we are doing this live again. We're on DLive, Facebook, and YouTube. We're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Taking your phone calls. If you have comments on this stuff, I know you guys are going to have something to say about this. Uh, I know people are, have been frustrated with this whole, just the whole situation for the past year. I don't really have to elaborate. I know that you know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, beyond that, uh, what do you think about it? I, I, like I said, please, uh, please, uh, please call us and let us know. 702-957-1037. That's 702 702- Two nine five seven one zero three seven. You can join the Discord at troubledminds.org. All right, now, now let's let's uh, let's just check out a couple of, the, of these emails that seem to be uh, very um, uh, let's let's call them spicy. All right, so here's one in particular. Uh, I'm going to link this, and uh, you guys can actually check it out directly in the chat. As always, I like you guys to uh, to have my sources as we look at these things and talk about these things. I'll put it up on the screen, but he's actually taking correspondence here in this uh, in this particular email from an individual named uh, what's this guy's name? Peter Dasak, D A S Z A K. All right, now <laughs> Peter Dasak. Here, here we go. Uh, I'm going to put this on the screen. Hold on, give me just one moment. All right, now this email says this. Right now, this is an email from. This is Peter Daszak to Anthony Fauci, right? Dr. Fauci. And this was April 18th, 2020, when when this was sent. It says, uh, subject, thank you for your public comments re-COVID-19's origins. Importance high. As the PI of the R01 grant publicly targeted by Fox News reporters at the presidential press briefing last night, I just wanted to say a personal thank you on behalf of our staff and collaborators for publicly standing up and stating that the scientific evidence supports a natural origin for COVID-19 from a bat to human spillover not a lab release from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And then there's a big blacked out portion here that's uh, redacted for some reason. Maybe it's a little too too hot to handle, too cold to hold. You know what I'm saying? So let's go down to the bottom of this. And he continues. Again, this is from Peter Daszak, which we'll talk about who he is in just a sec, because that part's more important than the email here. But it continues. He says, this is, and this is an email to directly to Dr. Anthony Fauci. He continues. From my perspective, your comments are brave, and coming from your trusted voice will help dispel the myths being spun around the virus origins. Once this pandemic's over, I look forward to thanking you in person and let you know how important your comments are to us all. All right, so it's like, all right, it sounds like this guy's really happy that uh, the the actual, uh, you know, virology, uh, what's it called, the... Uh, the the lab lab leak hypothesis. It's got a name now. It's got an official name, guys. The lab leak hypothesis, and we're allowed to talk about it again. I'm so excited. You notice, how- Dude, man. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have a tough time. I really have to focus not cursing tonight. Really, I swear it's gonna be tough for me. I'm gonna have to really. Like I'm gonna slow down because I'm actually getting mad. Focus. Yeah, <laughs> getting, same here. I'm Focus. Mad. Reptilian blood is boiling. Okay, go <laughs> go ahead, continue. Sorry. All right, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, uh, Wim Hof breathing techniques. Go get it. All right, all right. So then, all right. So now, who is this individual? Right. So he's thanking. In this email, again, these are uh, the FOIA release of Fauci's emails. They came spilling out all over social media last night and today. Like I said, people are still digging through them. Now, this individual, uh, this is the important part. This guy is, let's see, where is this? Let's see, I got too many pages up here. I got too many pages up here. Let's find the one. Let's find the one. All right. So um, here it is. Here it is. I'm going to link this here. Now, Peter Daszak is uh, the expert thank to the doc for this is again from a from uh, a an article by meaww.com i'm going to link this and now this guy in particular actually of course has connections to the wuhan institute of virology uh specifically funding uh let me read some of this in just a sec after i link this article all right so check this out uh so in the wake of the fauci email leak another name has come to light in connection with u.s funding to the wuhan institute of virology Peter Daszak, the president of Eco Health Alliance, had thanked Dr. Anthony Fauci for publicly dismissing the Wuhan lab leak theory in April 
in an April 2020 email published by BuzzFeed. Eco Health Alliance is the organization that granted $3.4 million in funding from the National Institutes of Health to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now, notice specifically in April 2020, this email was sent from this guy who clearly could be implicated in funding gain of function exercise of a possible bioweapon, right? And he's thanking Fauci for saying, oh, by the way, thanks for swatting that down for us. High five, buddy. You see? You see these connections here? And that's just one. That's just one email, right? Imagine when uh, there's time where people get to go through this information and start pulling out some of the other crazy, wacky stuff that's uh, that's kind of kind of going through this. And again, this is all part of what, what we're going to talk about tonight, which is the Great Reset. Right? We've talked about the Great Reset before on this show, and uh, it, it is one of the most frustrating things ever. It's like artificial scarcity. It is uh, these these COVID passports, which are happening the world over. Uh, our good friend Axel out there has said, you know, if, you, if, there's, if you're in the United States, you could probably fib, and it's fine. But if you travel internationally, nope, you're going to have to have a COVID passport. Anyway, so... Okay, we're we're coming up to a break here, so I got a couple minutes. Want to want to chip in anything there about that uh, that that email, the first one so far? We, there's more, of course, but but what the heck, right? Like, thanks for not mentioning something that might implicate me and get me in serious hot water. Thanks, Fauci. You're the best. <laughs> hey, Mike, it's only okay to talk about something and to even think about it. When they say it's okay, not a moment sooner. The, the earlier you are on something doesn't mean that you were there first and you were able to make the connections. It means that you're a weirdo. You're crazy. You're outside the norm. Oh, just because a virus materially manifested in an area right next to a bio lab in China, in China what you're insane for thinking that that could be the case and and you know just like a week ago it was it a week ago if we if we said these things we could get pulled and just like i said you know we need permission to think it's the same thing with the ufos you can you, you talk about aliens you talk about ufos you're you're a crackpot you're crazy scientists won't explore it nobody will look into it but as soon as you get permission you can talk about these things and then you know behind closed doors um, they're all on the same team. They're all shaking each other's hands, patting each other on the back, cutting checks, and uh, making tons of money off off of us. And I, I really think that we uh, places like this channel are really important, where we can kind of talk about these things, even if we have to kind of sidestep it or whatever. Because you, you know, and I, I don't mean to toot our own horn, but we've been right about a lot of stuff. We've predicted a lot of things. Uh, we've looked at a lot of things that have co- are coming to pass. I'm actually looking at a Reddit post that's predicted a lot of this stuff, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, behind the scenes, you don't know what's going on. And you have to read between the lines. you got to be able to see, oh, if what are they pushing for? They want us all to do X. They want us all to do Y. We can't talk about this. That's, that's smoke. And you know the saying. <laughs> yeah, the saying is you can't think because the thought police will come get you. That's the saying. <laughs> oh, you mean there's fire. There's fire. That's what you mean. Whether there's smoke, there's fire. I learned that from Hillary Clinton. And she, she actually used it as a, uh, as a defense. She said, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean if there's smoke, there's fire. There's other angles to the story. Here, no way. Is, <laughs> no, yeah. no way, really? Like, like how can, yeah, how can you use that as a, uh, as, as a defense? You know, I know where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> But, you know, ah. <laughs> anyway. All right. So so tonight, guys, we're talking about the Great Reset and what the hell is going on in this world. And not only that, big news, the Fauci email leaks with the FOIA documents and all kinds of stuff. We're uh, again, we're, we're taking your phone calls tonight. If you want to be part of the show, you know what to do. Give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. We're here with Ash the Reptilian from Mars, and we're talking about the Great Reset tonight. Don't go anywhere. More after the break.
Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. I'm here with your co-host, Ash the Reptilian from Mars. We are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and DLive. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls tonight. If you want to be part of the show, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we're talking about the Great Reset. We're talking about Fauci's leaked emails. We're talking about a world where the thought police are in full effect. Is 1984 come and gone and we're into the next level? Well... I think you might have to ask Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum and talk about the Great Reset, which is what we're doing tonight. So that's what we're doing, and that's what's going on. Welcome back, Ash, the reptilian from Mars. Boop, boop, boop. Let's see if our time travel tech is working. Are you there, buddy? I think we're doing good. I think, I think, I think we established. Can, can you read me? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. All right, so so we were we were talking about these Fauci emails. Now, again, right, uh, this individual by the name of uh, Peter, what what is this jerk's name? Uh, his name is Peter Daszak, D A S Z A K. And of course, what did he do? He was uh, he was actually part of the funding from the Eco Health Alliance, which of course is the organization that granted three point four million in funding from the National Institute of Health to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and in these FOIAs. All right. It, it was leaked that Fauci actually was thanked in an email by this guy for saying, hey, thanks for not putting out that it might have been a lab leak because that might have been super bad for me. You're the best, man. After this all blows over, we need to get together and I'll thank you personally. Wink, wink. What does that mean? Bring you children to sacrifice? I don't know what that means. I jest, of oh, course. Man, I thought you were going to say course. money. You went, you went right there. Oh, I jest, of course. Uh, that's not really what I mean. No, I, I meant money. I meant money, clearly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got you. The children are in the mail. I got it. I got what you mean. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just, but, um, yeah, but like, <laughs> so insane. That's, that's so insane. And you know, there's something, uh, if you guys don't know what gain of function research is, it's basically where they take, they find like crazy viruses and animals and monkeys, bats, whatever. And they reverse engineer them in order to become compatible with humans. Uh, so that they can, <clears throat> air quote, uh, deal with them. So they basically cre- create crazy viruses so they can figure out how to cure them so they can beat it to the punch naturally. But, I don't know, that just sounds like a bioweapons lab to me. I don't know. I mean, it's the same thing. And just so you know uh, about COVID, COVID is very infectious, but it, it's its uh, kill rate isn't that bad. There are viruses that are 15 times more deadly than COVID already sitting on shelves that they've made um, from SARS variants and stuff like that. So think about that. And we just recently raised billions of dollars to contribute towards more gain of function research, (laughs) which actually got us into the situation in the first place. And I think that's an important thing to establish that this is what got us in this situation in the first place. If they did not do this, this would not have happened. So it's kind of like someone stealing their dog, stealing your dog, and then charging you five grand, and then they find find your dog, right? <laughs> At what point do you ask the question, you know, <laughs> what happened here? And, and, and to, if, we, if we stay complacent, it's going to happen again, right? It's going to happen again. And, uh, you know, history always repeats itself. So as, as a... As we kind of see, uh, so there were some really horrifying things in the past hundred years of human history, and so if we're uh, we're kind of uh, chasing chasing our tail back to this same situation, uh, this could be bad. This could be very bad. Again, you know, like uh, you guys know me, I am a am a advocate for freedom. I'm an advocate for the Bill of Rights, and I know you're not even allowed to say that anymore because it's a racist thing, right? It's it's, it's all these other horrifying things that uh, it's just not not it's not cool anymore. You're not you're become a terrorist, but uh, like. These are the types of things that people need to be thinking about and talking about, in my opinion, which is why we're here talking about them. If we don't, nobody will. Right. And this is a there are some connections to be made to where they're trying to undermine these personal freedoms of yours. So just as a as a as a heads up, that's what's going on tonight. As we talk about these things where we have an eye to the future and that uh, we hope that uh, if enough people are aware of these shenanigans that are going on in the government and everywhere else, 
that we're not going to uh, allow it to happen. What's that D. Snyder song? We're not going to take it. Yep, exactly right. Uh, we got a phone call uh, to, to take it here, but to anything to chip into that real quick, but don't sing, please. <laughs> that was bad on my part. <laughs> why don't you Why don't you ever want me to sing? I, I'll well, sing in my real reptilian voice, you know? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I don't think... Uh, no. I, I, the reason I say that is because I don't think our human technology can pick it up. Your notes are probably so beautifully high. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Ah, wow, you're getting good at that. You may, maybe, Mike, you can uh, slip into a political career. Maybe there's one for you, but he's got kind of good at talking. Hey, no, but uh, there's smoke. There's not necessarily fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. With that, no, let's go to the caller. Um, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is uh, on the phone, so you may have to do your uh, your magic trick there, Ash. So here we go. Let's go. Uh, let's go to uh, Paul in New Hampshire. What's up, my friend? You're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash. How are you? Oh, wait. Actually, hold on. I muted that a long time ago because I was running late. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Paul in New Hampshire, you're on Trouble Wines with Mike and Ash. How are you, my friend? Hey, Mike. Ash, you guys there? Yes, Can sir. you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Go right ahead. Hey, hey guys, you know, it's kind of funny what Ash was just mentioning, you know, and I can hear how he kind of cleared his throat getting into this. But, um, yeah, well, what are we talking about? Uh, weaponizing viruses? Kind of funny that this comes up now, too, especially with all the news that's going on. Um, you know, hey, you know, I'm kind of in this position right now. Where I got to kind of keep my mouth shut. I've been one of those guys that has been willing to bring out this information to people, the stuff you just said, Mike, that we should be talking about. Um, but if you do talk about it, I guess you get in trouble. I'm, you know, I'm banned on Facebook right now. And uh, I didn't do anything that anybody else wasn't doing. Um, I talked about some serious issues that are happening right now, told my political views, talked about these things. But if I'm not Dr. Anthony Fauci or Tucker Carlson or, you know, should I stop there? Where do we go here? Um, who are you going to take off next to where they're going to shut you down? Uh, and by the way, I'm just a little guy. Yeah, I don't have a bunch of lawyers. I'm not the guy bringing it up. I'm taking on CBS here and proving their, um, and let's put it this way. They came up with a new law now. Um, you know, this is just my opinion. I say this all the time. Opinion. That's the First <laughs> Amendment right we've all been given. The right to be wrong. Opinion. Yes, sir. Yeah, go, go right ahead. Yeah. Well, but, you know, hey, man, they're telling me that I'm, you know, I'm stealing copyright laws. I'm a uh, public domain, a news show that talks about these things, as you are. And yet, um, I apparently ticked somebody off to the point that they shut me down and think that's going to stop it. Um, I think um, you said it. We need to talk about these things. We need to get this out in the open. And apparently, even though they're showing these these emails now of Anthony Fauci, um, is this going to change anything? Are, are we still controlled by mass media and by government? Uh, I'd say yes. I'd be the first guy to vote yes. Um, not that my vote matters, but um, I think you know about that, too. Um, be careful. Be careful what you help say. Help me out, guys. <laughs> Okay, look. Now, now the funny part about that is that uh, let, let's let's make bets, uh, let, imaginary, because I'm not trying to you know take anybody's money or anything like that. But let, let's let's just look and pre- try and predict the future. Even with all this embarrassment happening with Fauci, like, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'll bet you there's an unbelievable amount of embarrassing things in his emails that are going to come out, right? And so. What do you think is going to happen to him? Do you think he'll be fired? Do you think they'll remove his pension? Or do you think they'll gallop up on their white horses and protect him? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Well, uh, yeah, well, you know, can I, let me answer that question, Mike. I think if we go with the rhetoric of what's been happening, of course they're going to gallop up on their white horses. Um, well, you know, we're not Fox News. We're not the fake media, but uh, apparently the people that are fake media are going to continue to shove this rhetoric down your throat, get vaccinated, um, listen to the people that are scientists, even though they're not. 
And, um, you know, what, what does it take to be a scientist now? I guess that means, you know, who, who do you know and who do you, you know, say that other word? Is blow okay to say on the radio? I'm not sure, but, um, you know, it just seems to be, it just, are you kidding me? It's just, it's a nonstop control mechanism going on right now. Um, you know, I mean, let's pay $14 for a steak next week and go barbecuing and be happy with it because we're <laughs> fortunate enough to live fortunate enough, <laughs> enough to live in a free world where we can buy steaks. By the way, the next time you go to the grocery store, be sure to fill out the credit application so you can go to the meat aisle. Because that's where this is going. Ch- check this out. This is this is pretty fantastic, right? So just, just a couple like really <laughs> insane things. Just in time for driving season, the weather gets better, people start taking their masks off, th- things yeah. like this, right? Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the gas prices go through the roof and there's a sh- gas shortage. And just in time like it's like okay well you can't even make this stuff up and then just after that as we get into barbecue season <laughs> we have the meat shortage uh, what's next what's next uh, next it's going to be an ice cream shortage for the summer right if there's an ice cream shortage there will be riots i promise you that and i'm just kidding of course not real riots well, but. <laughs> mike the ice cream shortage is only going to happen for people like obama and joe <laughs> biden who were sitting at the ice cream store telling us about how great it is to be an american because i have chocolate chocolate chip so you know i'm gonna go get some chocolate chocolate chip maybe you know fill out an application so i can afford a steak this weekend and if i'm lucky i'll cook some burgers and you know and then we'll listen to what's happening next week on ufos because it never ended but now we have something else to talk about um because we have a meat shortage and you know (laughs) shortage excuse me And, 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 and and you know maybe gas prices will go up because of the airports if you haven't heard that then you if you watch mainstream media they're blaming the lack of people wanting to travel because of a couple of drunks on a plane that, you know, now they're not serving alcohol because somebody got, you know, lit on a plane and got in a fight. Yeah. Well, I see that happen in the local bars once in a while, but they don't stop selling alcohol. I guess, you know, they just want to make money. And yet, you know, if you want to take a plane flight now, it's going to be their fault. If you don't want to pay the plane rates that are coming up because, and that's going to create the gas shortage because now we're going to have to drive <laughs> it's, it's where we want to go. It's all I related. Mean, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Uh, we we got to go, man. You 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 did fantastic tonight. Uh, I appreciate you sidestepping the uh, the f bombs and all the things cons- since we're on the radio. Everybody, please follow New Hampshire UFO no, Hunter. I, this is this is Paul from New Hampshire. New Hampshire UFO Hunter. Follow him on YouTube. Thanks for the call, my friend. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Hey, thanks, Mike Ash. Great job tonight, guys. Love you as usual. Um, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call. There you go. If you want to be part of the show tonight, guys, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Join the Discord. Troubledminds.org has both the phone number and the Discord link. Uh, Great call. I, I don't know. I, I, like, it, again, it just seems more and more comical, does it not? All of this. All of this just, wow. Yeah. Artificial scarcity. We'll, we'll get to that as we go. But holy smokes, man. I know you're catching up to his call there. But, but uh, wow. Wow. I mean, uh, th- this is where we're at. This is the world we live in. And uh, like I said, if you're not paying attention, uh, this is 1984. This is 1984 textbook, 1984. And uh, let's see, what do we got here? Okay, there we go. Uh, there's a the Reddit thread. Okay, so so I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about that, Ash? Any comment there before we uh, move on and talk about maybe some 1984 and some artificial scarcity and all the crazy things that are going on right around now? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny. There's a lot of people who are aware of kind of what's coming and, and predict it. And, it's, you know, they've been kind of, uh, they've been watching it just roll in, you know? It's kind of like uh, we're all at the beach laying down. And uh, you look around, and you're like, hey, guys, you know, the tide's coming in. Should we stand up? And no one listens to you. And you just watch those waves wash over you. <laughs> it's kind of insane, you know, to some degree. It's like, man, like, what is, like, and, but that's the point of the show. And, and, and this, is, this is why your calls are so important, you know, to get a bead, to show other people that, you know, people are awake. They are paying attention. And the idea of the show tonight it's perfect for you guys to call in is what's going on right like things are nuts you know a few days ago 
uh, uh, today we got the Fauci leaked emails, and then we also got the um, the meat plant uh, getting shut down, basically getting air quote hacked. And so, what does this all mean? What are all these little pieces? This 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 puzzle that is being put together. What? I mean, we can guess where it's going, right? But you know, like anything, execution is sloppy. Is is are they all in an, uh, against us? Is America not on board? Like certain factions? I think, in my opinion, I think that there's quite a bit of factions out there, and most of them are on board with where we're going. And some of them want to be top dog as we move. Some of them don't want to lose their power as we transition. But I think most of them agree that, you know, something kind of needs to be done. And this is the kind of system they're moving toward. And uh, like I said, a lot of you guys, you got a lot of guys are paying attention. You're seeing it. You're seeing the change. And yeah, going back to Agenda 2030, the Great Reset, a lot of this stuff was scheduled to kind of really start taking place in 2020 and start being executed uh, by 2030. Kind of 2030 is the goal. Um, and, and we're moving along here and uh, kind of like on schedule. Um, you know, a, a lot of people, when COVID happened, they were hoping that we get back to normal. And I, I don't know if I, I don't know if that's ever going to be the case again, which is kind of kind of sad. You know, it's kind of sad, but crazy stuff. It's crazy. I mean, I have a, a tons of stuff here. We can go in a lot of different directions. So I don't know where you kind of want to start, Mike. Um, you know, I had the idea that um, you know. Okay, so l- l- let me g- let me go through this real quick. We got a little time for a little little. Yeah, we, we got about five minutes and a caller on deck, so uh, we'll uh, we we can hold the caller a little bit. Uh, please, please, uh, please hold, please hold, friend. We'll get to you soon. But go go ahead. So let me frame uh, one part of the puzzle, and it's kind of like the main thing that kind of triggered today tonight's conversation, guys. If you're if you're in all these different countries, I know like Canada, the censorship and like like the craziness in Canada over the COVID restrictions are like way and beyond, right? Like. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you fly into Canada, you have to go like quarantine in a hotel forcefully. They take you away for like 15 days. So I know I hear a lot of things about the Canadians. My heart goes out to you guys. Um, but like, I think that as far as the world's concerned, America, every, everyone's looking at America because wherever Mer- whatever happens to America could, will kind of dictates what's going to happen to the rest of the world. And that's because America's like superpower. We got all the guns, right? We can. We could fight the rest of the world ourselves. And so there's a lot of overlap in all these different conspiracy theories about America basically bending the knee, right? So, um, you know, we talked about the Great Reset. And in the Great Reset video in their literature, America will no longer be the world's superpower. There will be several, right? It will be a conglomerate of nations making decisions, not America above all else. There's the New World Order, which basically is the Great Reset, rebranded, right, and and updated. But they talked about the New World Order, where there will be a global system. And and any global system we're going to move into, America's going to have to come down, right? And then there's a third. I actually had this Reddit post where a guy was like, I've been to underground bases. I hang out with the elite. I'm telling you because there's nothing you can do about it. But in 2019, this was in 2016. I read this post. It was like, I think right after COVID, right before, but there will be an event. And from there, things will get gnarly. And the, the world has been half empty. This is what his quote, but America will is, has been half full. We need America to be half empty. So, we can transition into a new system. American, and, and, and basically the key of all of this is America needs to be dropped a peg, right? We need to liquidate um, America to some degree so that the rest of the world can be raised up, right? We can't have this superpower as it is. And I, th- my guess is that's kind of what's going on. And as we transition toward this new world order, this great reset, this this whatever this thing is – Everyone's got different opinions of what it's going to be, and we're fighting. And I think, like, literally, you can't, like like I said earlier, you can't fight each other through wars. So they're doing it through hacking. They're doing it through this. They're doing it through that. And meanwhile, all these different agendas are going. And in Europe, they're, like, really moving forward with the vaccine passport and stuff. Um, And in here, you know, there's tons of um, uh, shootings. And 
you know, they're 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 preparing legislations to to get rid of the guns, which is like a, a key ingredient for any sort of change. But this is kind of like what I see. It's an ongoing theory per se, and it just it's just man. When I heard that the meat supply was getting shut down, I'm like, oh, gas, food, right? And they say that it were only two weeks of no food before stuff gets gnarly, right? And people like George Soros, they've been trying to crash America for a long time. And and these are the things that you do, you know, uh, the rampant spending, you know, we're just like spending money like insane, like every other failed empire that's come before us. We're just uh, basically throwing in every ingredient for our own failure. And I think that America, I think Americans, I think people in general are very resilient. And um, they just have to keep stacking these things up because we're holding out. And maybe, maybe you know, the last card is the alien invasion. Then maybe that's the make sure to get it done. I don't know. Again, this is we're we're just talking. We're just out in conspiracy theory. Our tinfoil hats have tinfoil hats. But what do you guys think? Do you think? Do you think maybe we're onto something? Do you think the Great Resets? Where are we going? Do you think the New World Order? Or the Do you think America is going to continue to kind of suffer? Do you think the world? Like, um, I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Do you think I'm kind of on to something? You think I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm well, out, uh, I, I think out in the I, crazy town? I, I think two things can be true at the same time. Number one, you're a paranoid lunatic lizard. Number one. Number two, you might also be right about a bunch of this stuff. <laughs> so, you know, it, it doesn't have to That's be fair. one thing or the other. You know what I'm saying? It, it, two right, things right. can be true at the same time. But, but okay, again, like this is, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're thinking about tonight. Now, uh, we got a good point. Somebody, uh, MJ in the chat says electricity this summer. And that's a hell of a point. We've been talking about, and it's been in the news, circulated for the past several years, about the possibility of our actual electrical grid being hacked. Is this maybe like like a literal lead up, a walk up to this situation where, oh, by the way, it's 110 degrees everywhere. I say that because I live in Vegas. And of course, it's not that everywhere. But, you know, you shut down the power grid and people start dying. Are we walking up to that? This is what we're talking about tonight. I know it's crazy. I know it seems tinfoil. I know it seems out there. However... When you have people like Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum saying things like, you will own nothing and you will be happy about it, which of course means you're going to rent everything from the elite that you need to live. And of course, which means they can cut you off at any point and say, no, we refuse to serve you because, oh, I don't know, you didn't get a particular shot we might want you to have. You see what I'm saying here? Right. There's a problem. There's well, a big also, problem here. Mike. Right they also there. said you won't you you won't eat as much meat and you won't um you won't use as much gas. I guess they were yeah. right about that yeah, too. Exactly, exactly. Like as as a as an actual prophecy, this has been prophesized. <laughs> Here we are living it out with you, and hopefully you see the humor in this. I'm laughing. It's not funny. It's, uh, it's something to keep an eye on, and uh, we don't have to take this. We can reject this. We can tell our leaders that, uh, and I say leaders, and I mean that because they lead by the will of the people, and that's the truth. So anyway, as we run out of time here, this is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. I'm here with Ash the Reptilian from Mars. We're talking about the Great Reset tonight. We're talking about the meat shortages, the gas shortages. What's next? Ice cream shortages, electricity shortages. You tell me. Horrifying times. We're trying to stay aware of the situation. Thanks again. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more after the break.
questions of you in earnest into the digital darkness. Yo ho, yo ho, welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange. I'm here with your co-host, Ash the Reptilian from Mars, and we'd like to say hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. This show is live. If you want to be part of the show tonight, the number to call is 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And this, of course, is the show where we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. We are streaming live on Facebook, DLive, and YouTube. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're talking about the Great Reset. We're talking about Fauci's leaked emails and that embarrassing flap that's surely going to be covered up by the mainstream media. We'll see. Time will tell. The leaks, the Fauci, it's not actually leaks, it's a FOIA. Actual FOIA requests came through uh, going after Fauci's emails, and uh, there's some embarrassing details already. One day in, there's some embarrassing details and what in the world is going on. So that's what we're talking about tonight. We got a caller to get to, but uh, let's uh, let's beam into Mars first. Beep, beep, beep. Ash, do you hear me? Can you, is the time, time travel machine working? Can you hear me, sir? Hey, man, I'm just sitting up here in Mars. Watching the world burn. <laughs> it seems like we're getting there. Can you see the lights all the way from up there? Of the fires, I mean? <laughs> yeah, not as good as the Australia fires, but uh, it's it's getting pretty... Actually, uh, as the kids say, it's getting pretty sus, right? Isn't that the word, sus? <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed embarrassed for using it but no let's let's let so let's review we, you know we had we covid started right covid kicked us all off we got our meat and america hacked uh the evergreen uh trailer or whatever did a tokyo drift into the harbor so now all logistics <laughs> is messed up and i and i i talked to a lot of businesses and logistics is bad i'm talking you can't get you can't get anything these days you know you try to get brick for your backyard everyone's home spending money right everyone's getting checks too right like they're getting covid checks they're getting money we've got we've got dogecoin all this crazy stuff going on then we get our our gas is hacked so you literally just go through a list of like infrastructure things and you start just checking off all the important things in exactly. modern day life the, the price of lumber and, is through the roof don't forget that we didn't even talk about that I mean, that's true. And, so and many then things. what's the rhetoric? What's the rhetoric they that they use the whole time? And I mean, it came out pretty fast. It was uh, the thing that kind of was in common was uh, pushing for this great reset, right? So that's kind of where we are. And it's like, how many how many things are left on that checklist? How many things do you have to cross off before? It? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's gonna it's starting to get a little scary. I, I, I don't know about you. Before something seems actually suspicious. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We got a phone call. Let's go to this. We, this guy's been waiting for a long time. This is Mister Mission Control. What's up, my friend? You're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash. How are you? Hey, what's up, guys? Doing our hey, thing, um, man. Doing um, our thing. Uh, what's what's on your mind tonight? Oh, I was, I was just checking space weather and stuff to see where I was going to cover that electrical thing. But I wanted to cover first the three shots, the three, the third shot. Have, have you guys heard of the third shot? No. Is that is that the uh, the the booster shot for the variants that will inevitably come season to season, or is there something now, else? Well, Can you, you would you it, would think you would think it's the booster for next year, right? They say you need a booster a year from now. Everybody's just now getting their, their, I mean, they just started letting kids have it. And uh, here's the, re the uh, report on the kids right here, right here. Um, look at that. Um, so, but anyway, you guys can look at that. But there's the latest re uh, report on the kids. Um, so you'd think that the booster shot would be a year out, right? Well, there's people already getting it. And got it a week or two ago and started getting a week or two. And now they're pushing for a third shot for not a, it's not the booster. It's just a third shot. You know, what kind of, what kind of dimensional portal did I trip through 
like I talk about the full moon having natural timeline shifts, right? I think we went through one earlier, and it was on um, this last energy shift I was I posted in this uh, um, BLF IT Curania and the uh, and the uh, BLF IT link I, I dropped. You can see the electric readouts, and you go down a little bit to the graph that's got all the red on it. And that's where you see the CERN uh, firing up their magnets and stuff, right? The CERN's trying to uh, uh, adjust our geomagnetic fields for these solar flares that are popping off in, in the uh, um, magnetic, I mean, the solar maximum we're heading into. Well, we shouldn't be heading into such an active solar maximum cycle oh, just as yet. It should be a, a year or two out from now where what we're seeing now. <clears throat> so it's so I guess CERN is trying to adjust itself. I don't know if they're trying to save us or, you know, jump us dimensionally through somewhere or what's going on. But something is definitely happening. Um, and it's picking up on all the monitors. That the sun is reacting to it. I believe CERN definitely has something to do with it. If not, there's a singularity heading towards us, you know, like a black hole. And, and, and mind you, we don't totally understand black holes, but the theory is, is if you would approach it, time would increase. So there's people for months now, for almost, almost since COVID hit, people have been complaining that the time has increased in speed and they don't have enough time during the day to do the things they usually do before it's, you know, midnight or whatever. And the kids are actually complaining about it. This has been on the monograph show. This has been on the Marfugel show talked about. Um, I've noticed it. I never said any much about it because I just thought I was getting older. And, and, and stuff's kind of collapsing on me the past couple of years. And I just thought, you know, it was just getting older. But no, people are actually saying that time has sped up. Like exponentially everything. The clocks, the, the, the and you notice the moon isn't setting and, and rising in the same spots. And the sun, today I noticed the sun set way to the north, to the northwest, north-northwest. And it's not supposed to do that until late midsummer. And you know how the temperatures are? The temperatures are, it hell, it didn't get above 60, 70, 68 degrees here in, in the Ozarks today. So I'm, I'm just there to tell everybody, no, free, like Frigga, Frigga, no, you're not crazy. Uh, you know, almonds not crazy. There are things going on. I want to tell everybody that there is, is we're, we're shifting through, like what Naughty Beaver said, we're going through the levels of hell, ascending to these levels of the UFOs are at, the dimensional, uh, that link, that, a link last night about the, the, the dimensionals, the entities being a higher dimension or whatever, but they've always been here. We just couldn't see them except for when they're in the ships. The propulsion engines somehow transit, transcendentally expose them on our 3D realm. Well, actually, we live in a 4D, but we're talking about ascending to 5D, you know. But our, our human senses can only perceive the, the 3D. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's there's a lot there, bro. There's a lot there. That's why this is a a kind of a longer conversation as we go, right? Like I always say, God willing, we have tomorrow. Uh, We got Ash here tonight, so we we I can't I can't let everybody go too long on the calls. Uh, But I appreciate it. Everybody, please follow Mister Mission Control on YouTube. Great points. Uh, Thanks for thanks for the phone call tonight. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thank you for waiting so long on hold. Nightly 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 streams at usually seven p.m. Central Standard Time, guys. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the call, my man. Uh, Mr. Mission Control on right. YouTube. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, looking to hear from you guys tonight. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can be part of the show tonight. We're talking about the Great Reset. We're talking about, uh, again, right, how it feels like we live in the upside down. We had the uh, right the, the pipeline, quote, hack. Now we have the, the meat shortage, the meat plant, hack. Everything's being hacked. Now, so what are we looking forward to? Uh, predicting the future. MJ in the chat said, watch it this summer you watch there's going to be an electricity shortage something's going to happen to the power grid and uh this is uh and again just to point this out uh, kelly said in the chat this is no joke guys this is not a joke because uh people don't know how to survive nowadays he says in in uh, on facebook thanks kelly says if all the power went out and no internet watch people go crazy 
and start the madness. And that's true. Like that, that's the damn truth. And so not only that, right, if you can't go to the grocery store and get food, where the hell are you going to get food? Right? We don't all have our own private farms. Of course not. Crazy stuff going on. So and the takes on that, I know you heard his call there. Ash, what do you think about uh, Mr. Mission Control and what he was talking about? Yeah, um, he actually made some good points about, um, you know, we, we covered a lot of what he said in little separate shows, right, where we talked about the solar flare and, um, you know, uh, some of the other UFO, UFO the, the deep uh, the deep state of the UFO community <laughs> talk about a uh, so potential solar flare, and this has been mentioned by extraterrestrials, so supposedly. But um, no, we we were talking about the magnetic, magnetic pole shifting, right? And they were they were accelerating, and we don't talk about that anymore. And I noticed that myself that the it was like eight o'clock and it was light out. I was like, wait a minute, and I was like, oh, uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of stupid, so I'm like, oh, maybe I just. Maybe daylight saving time. I don't know. But I haven't really stopped to think about it in that, you know, these elites could know something's coming and they wouldn't tell us, right, to, to panic us. So maybe it's part part of the equation that something is happening on a galactic scale. The, the extraterrestrials always said that catastrophes or great change is coming. So uh, maybe it is. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, that's kind of what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about uh, all this crazy stuff's going on. The, you know, all these things have happened over the last few years, and especially recently. Are we kind of heading somewhere? Are we is this have to do with the Great Reset? So why don't we talk a little bit about the Great Reset? Let's let's get to it and uh, let's let's kind of review some of those things. Um, the UN and kind of their agendas, like the 2030, the uh, the development goals of 2015, and a couple other things. So uh, you want to take it away, Mike? Take yeah. it away, Mike. Yeah, sustainable kind living like and all the rest of this. I've got some clips actually, actually from Klaus Schwab and some of the things he said specifically. And if you read between the lines of what he's actually saying, it's a little terrifying. Uh, but we do have phone calls. So let's actually take a couple phone calls while we're at this and uh, see what you guys think. That is uh, the point of the show after all. If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go to Joe in Florida. You are on Trouble Minds with Mike. How are you, my friend? Mike and Ash, I'm sorry. Habit, habit. How are you guys doing? Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Go right ahead, sir. All right. So, uh, you know, kind of curious that you were bringing this up tonight. I was sitting here last night, had a power surge. Power goes on and off. Today, was at a graduation, power went off, on and off, in the middle of the stadium. It's kind of creepy. And, um, you know, I've talked, spoken before, but my sister-in-law, she, you know, she worked for the power company here. And she would tell me, hey, look over in that block. It's not even secure. And that's a a power station. Okay. Um, Are they going to hack it? Let's look at things. Or, you know, outside actors are playing games. Lately, my attitude, despite whoever's the president, has been more nationalistic, meaning that we feed a lot of the world. And if there is going to be a great reset, and outside sources are going to expect to get our basic supplies, then let them come and get it, because we're going to be armed. I don't care whose side you're on. We don't need to feed China. We don't need to feed Russia. We don't need to feed other countries. And we don't need to send them our oil. But if somebody screams nationalize something, all of a sudden that's fascism or communism or socialism. If you're literally nationalizing for the defense of the country, basic needs, basic needs. Everybody's been mentioning the power. You know, and I agree with that. We might have trouble in the summertime because they're going to start playing games, hacking all of that. Um, another self-inflicted wound, at least here in Florida, is real estate prices are blowing up like they did in 2006. And they're expected to crash. You know how many people will be underwater or foreclosed on? Uh, that's a, it, mission control. It's, so it's going to be like 2008. You know, uh, like 2008 all over again. Yeah, exactly. Just like, just like 2008 all over again. And... Mr. Mission Control brought up a good point with the third shot. You know, and I'm kind of just bumping on these topics, these bullet points very quickly without getting into depth, but the third shot has come up. And a couple of things I've read 
I read very briefly on the Fauci, but it was curious. One of the outtakes that I read that they mentioned Ebola, like they were waiting for something, and then Ebola was in there. Not that it was mentioned as that was going to be the next pandemic, but they were comparing, I guess, COVID nineteen, um, how long it took to manifest. I believe compared to like Ebola, and I've been in my belief. Okay. The next thing they release would be some kind of aerosol virus with Ebola. And by the time you figure out a cure for that, everybody's going to be bleeding in the streets and gone. So another question I have for the group, which I have found curious, and I'm going to totally sound like an anti-vaxxer, okay? But growing up, I knew very few people who have had Crohn's disease or an autoimmune disease, for that matter. Okay, now all of a sudden, it seems like one in five people I talk to, from where I work at the funeral home, to my kid down the block, my own son, all of them, they have Crohn's disease. And what's bad about that? You have to be in a biologic that comes every eight weeks, just like a diabetic. So what would they easily do? We've said this before, if they want to control and squeeze parts of the population. You can have supply line issues, whether they were hacked or made up internally, just to artificially raise the price. There's a lot of things. You know, the great reset could be many different things to different people. It could just be bringing Americans up to par with pay. I have this argument every day. My wife's a boss. She's like, people don't deserve 15 bucks an hour. Whatever your side is on that, okay? The price of wood was going up anyway. The price of gas was going up anyway. The price for everything was going up (laughs) anyway, and nobody was getting paid for it. Nobody's getting paid for it. Nope. So, you know, in my mind, you know, and this is going to hurt a lot of people's chap and ass, but I'm just here to play devil's advocate. I think a lot of us are. You know, we might be forced, as the Great Race said, to maybe be more socialistic as other European countries. Okay. Whereas Chinese are more communist. I'm not saying that's right or not. Okay. But I'm tired of this country making the greatest advancements and everybody else stealing them from us. Yeah. Amen to that. Hey, hey, Joe, we got a call behind you and we're, we're on a timeline, you know, no, no, it's no problem. So, it, it's so, it's so problem. Maybe I'll call you guys after 12, but uh, that's like my two cents. I got a lot more on this just to them history major in psychology, whatever, and uh, have written papers. But you guys have a good night on that, and uh, good show. Appreciate the call, my friend. That's Joe from Florida. Uh, great stuff, as always. You're definitely welcome to call back a little bit later. Uh, Ash, a uh, quick take on that, and then we got another phone call behind that. Earth to Mars. If there's, no, if there's no connection, if our time machine broke, then I'll go to the call. <laughs> Earth the oh yeah, it's it's always, it's always a second. I got that <laughs> delay on the calls. It's it's, it's don't worry. It's I was a, I was yelling at Martha, the AI. So I was trying ahead. to figure it. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, he had some great points. You know, um, he, uh, real estate, real estate was nuts because everyone was fleeing the cities, right? And uh, oh, uh, okay, okay. So I do have this post in uh, real quick. This guy was saying that. Um, Remember when right as COVID was starting, we were hip to it, but other people weren't. And all those CEOs quit. Do you remember that? Yeah. And it was like, yeah, they were all resigned. They were trying to say, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a coincidence. There's like 50, <laughs> something crazy, like some really top people. Well, this Reddit post I have, ah, oh, man, I'm trying to find it now. Uh, do, 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 this. Uh, he said, no, that's not it. Anyway, it was basically saying uh, he predicted that, right? He was like, I he when that happened, he brought it to everyone's attention, and he said, "Uh oh." And this was like, uh, let me see here. Let me find it exactly. Just give me two seconds I, as it loads. Uh, just as I warned you in 2020 that something big was coming based on CEO behavior, I'm warning you about CEO behavior again. So what a lot of these. Uh, people are doing is they're getting divorces with their wives and they're splitting their assets that way and they're liquidating. They're using these events to secretly liquidate their wealth. 
as if in anticipation for something and the frequency of what they're doing is, is ramping up of, of, of them kind of quitting their jobs, which is, it's, it's kind of like a, a red flag, just like it was previously. And so this guy says, you know, probably what's going to be coming is um, some really bad stuff. And, you know, I bet there's going to be a hack or whatever. And then literally two, three days later, there was a hack. Um, and it was pretty, it's pretty nuts, man. It's pretty nuts. And he's saying the elites are kind of, uh, they're kind of getting, getting ready for it again. And he, he says something's coming. And now, you know, now we've had our second hack. We've got, since, since he first posted that, we had the two hacks, meat and, um, fuel, gas, uh, fuel, fuel and gas. And then, um, rampant spending, right? We've had rampant spending and, um, one of the pipelines being shut down voluntarily. And I think there was a bunch of mayors shutting down their pipelines so they don't get hacked, which is kind of dumb. Um, yeah. And there's like a, it's been a kind of a, a mess ever since, but this guy was literally hit it on the head two days before. Um, so uh, anyway, I thought that was really interesting and it, it's very relevant to what's going on now. You know, you yeah, can kind of sure. see you just, you watch the rich people. They get, I know some really rich people and they, they, they get they get hits early man and it spreads through their networks like wildfire and they have the money and they have the resources to change to move and so all the people i knew in san francisco who are wealthy are gone they're all in florida now so it's a lot of crazy stuff so anyway great points sorry you triggered me on my rant but uh good stuff you're good good stuff, good stuff. Good hey and we got daryl on the line daryl hang tight we're gonna i didn't want to uh, put you on and then have to cut you off because of the bottom of the hour we'll go right to you as soon as we come back from the break so uh we're taking your phone calls this is troubled minds i'm michael strange this is ash the reptilian from mars we've got daryl on the line don't go anywhere we're talking about the great reset we're talking about artificial scarcity. We're talking about 1984 and how it's here. Yep, it's here. Don't go anywhere. More after the break. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. I'm here with your co-host, Ash, the reptilian from Mars. We are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and DLive. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls tonight. The topic is the Great Reset. Meat shortages, electrical grid hacks possibly on the way. We already had the pipeline fuel hack. What in the hell is going on out there? And uh, if, it, if this is what the future looks like with this artificial scarcity, I think, Houston, we have a problem. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We're going to go straight to this phone call because Daryl has been waiting for a very long time. Thank you for waiting, Daryl. You are on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash, if this will ever actually go. Go, come on, you can do it. There we go. What's up? Uh, you're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash. How are you, Daryl? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Great thank show, by the way. Thank you, thank you. What's on your mind tonight? Okay, a few things. Um, fake news, vaccines, the, the, this new reset. Uh, this is war. You know, what, what they've done to set us up for this pandemic is so evident. You know, if we go to the source with, with Fauci knowing all of this, way before, you know, the facts, this is obviously a setup to make a lot of money for a very few, you know, small amount of people, you know, to make them very rich. They were setting us up. We all know this. Don't we all know this is in this knowledge, like, anyway? But now it's going to be public knowledge. But the point is they've put us in a situation where they've made healthy people stay inside. They quarantined the healthy to not get sick. It doesn't even make sense what's happened. They ignored the science. They ignored the doctors that were in the fields. 
they, they were so passionate about speaking up for the, the treatments they were giving that were effective, but they couldn't let them speak. They had to humiliate them and, and fire them if they had anything that would, you know, upset their agenda of getting this vaccine out so they could make that money. And they had to make it an emergency. This is what pisses me off. So they have people dying. They won't even treat people that have COVID until they're absolutely dying. You know, and then they'll say, now you can come into the hospital. And they know they could treat them with so many different things, ivermectin, steroids. There's so many effective treatments that will not get you, uh, that will not kill you, that are safe, effective, and cheap. But because there's no money to be made, they don't want to, they like, hush it up. And they've done, done all kinds of uh, fake tests. And what happened to fake news? Nobody talks about fake news anymore. Now it's, um, now they're just censoring people, you know, the censorship. But the point is that how come now that we, the people that were passionate enough about the ivermectin and all these other treatments have finally, I, I believe, got their point across. They're not being censored anymore. They're talking. They're, be, they're allowed to have a debate or an argument. And certain countries are getting ivermectin, but not every country is. And I don't, I don't understand how we can hear of anybody having any kind of, uh, you know, worse outcomes or, or more deaths from COVID now because we have the vaccine, which was supposed to be the end all, but why depend on the end all when we have cheap options, but they have another drug. So now that the emergency is so-called over, why are they still pushing this vaccine on everybody? And people are getting sick from the vaccine. I want to know where the data is going from the vaccine um, adverse reaction site that people are reporting the deaths, the adverse reactions. What are they doing with that data? I mean, there's so much proof of that, that a lot of pregnant women have, have miscarried or aborted their, their babies af right after the vaccine, but they're still pushing the vaccine on pregnant women. Why are they pushing the vaccine on children where the, they're, they're, the outcome is not going to be more beneficial for them? You know, the risk is much, more, um, is much greater than the benefit. Isn't that the, what they used to preach with the vaccines? In any case, like, like I'm venting. I'm sorry. A, you're good. Um, you're, you're on fire. That's why I'm just quiet listening. You're you're on fire. And, and think about it too. It, like not just with the children, the vaccine, all this other stuff. It's all been flip flop, right? First it was like, well, this, then that, then the other thing, then back and forth and back and forth, and they can't make up their damn mind. Like literally, I got an email here of Fauci me emailing from the FOIA request. Of, I'm calling them leaks. They're not leaks emailing a colleague back and saying well you don't actually have to take or you don't have you don't have to wear a mask because the mask is basically right. to keep people that are sick from infecting other people it doesn't work the other way if you wear it and you're not sick it doesn't stop it it's supposed to stop the people that are sick right that's not what he said but he's he's actually sending an email to a colleague i'll, I'll put it up on the stream here in just a sec i've got the i've got the receipts like these are the types of things where we're supposed to do what we're told. We're supposed to ex expect honest information from these people. And they're flat out lying to us. I mean, like, like if that doesn't exactly. make you suspicious, I don't know what makes you suspicious. Like, what, what do you need? What, do you need well, we, for them to be, to be literally saying? Them. Yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm ranting now, too. <laughs> no, we want to trust them. We want to trust them. We want to believe that, they're, they're, that our, our interests are, you know, that our help is in their best interest, you know? But it's not true, and, but we still want to believe it. You know, I still want to believe it, but I don't believe it, you know? Um, he's had the worst record since, you know, we've had, that guy was talking about chronic diseases. We didn't have these chronic diseases when I was a kid. We didn't have peanut allergies when I was a kid. We, we didn't have this many vaccines when I was a kid. We had three. That's it. Now they have up to 74 vaccines on children, and there are, you know, vaccine-related deaths. There's vaccine-related um you know, illnesses that are proven. But if you're not on that list, there are algorithms for proving that you've had a vaccine-related, you know, um, incident is ridiculous. I mean, it's just, it's, it's absurd, yeah, you know? It's a, it's and a if cover it's not up. on there, like... It's a cover-up is what it is. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But I so, think it's, we've got to out this now. You know, we can't, we can't wait because who knows, you know, the long-term effects of this, we might have half the population as, it, as it's going right now. How do we know? These people, already there's proof that it's going to shorten their lifespan. Um, oh, God, I know this, um, this guy from, oh, God, from France. He was saying this vaccine should never have been approved. He's the one who um, discovered 
something with the AIDS virus, I think, one of these Nobel Prize winners in France, you know, that, um, and he's being suppressed. Oh, my God, he's being shut up. You haven't heard about it because he's already been shut up, you know. But he said that, that this can cause prion disease. I think we all know this, you know, it could cause the mad cow syndrome, you know, that the spike protein is going to attack healthy cells. It's going to, they're not going to know which cell to attack, and it's going to keep reproducing because it's synthesized. It's fake. So now that they didn't, maybe we didn't die fast enough, so they want to give us a third shot? I mean, <laughs> come on, you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to slow you down. Uh, I mean, and, and the thing is, though, like, like so, so what you're saying is is based in truth here, meaning that, Everybody knows, like it's common knowledge, that there's a vaccine fund, billions of dollars set aside for adverse reactions, and it happens all the time, not just with this, with others, okay? Right. And so that's the thing, but right. it's being suppressed. Like, it's literally common knowledge. It's been known for a very long time there are adverse reactions. And again, sure, fine. They're super rare. Sure, fine. But it's still common knowledge, but you can't even talk about it or bring it up or else again, the thought police, right? The censorship, the this, that, the other. Like you said, exactly. there's no fake news now. It's censorship. They're just like, nope, we're just not allowing right. that. But in a perfect example is the flip-flop on the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Like, again, a year ago, you couldn't say it or they'd literally take you off all the platforms, right? They'd call you a racist right. and just run you out of town on a rail. But now right. suddenly we have... Who? Who says it's okay? I don't even know who said it's okay, but suddenly it's okay, and everybody's talking about it, and it's all good. It's it's nuts. Like I said, we live in the upside down. This this stuff is crazy. This stuff is crazy. Daryl, we got to go. You are the best. Uh, anything I else? Say, anything oh, else? Okay. Well, we got you on the phone. Anything? Yeah, no go problem. Ahead. Final thought. Final thought. Go ahead. No, I, I one more thing to say. We knew about this. You know, doctors knew about this in nineteen um, and 20, um, 2019. I went in November before it was even a, a thought of anybody's. It was on the news. My doctor wanted to know if I had been traveling recently, and I knew this only because I'm listening to, you know, um, the fringe news. And I'm like, oh, you, are you worried about this thing in China? And this was in November. My doctor wanted to make sure that I hadn't been traveling anywhere, that I came in contact with anyone that had been in China. I'm like, wow. That happened before anybody was talking about this, you know? But that was just my doctor, you know, like a regular doctor visit. I had to fill out a form. How come the doctors even knew about this before we knew about it? So this, this agenda has been going on for a long time. They were planning this pandemic. Bill Gates' money is behind this. There's so much money behind this to control the media, to control the narrative. It's, it's, it's sinful. It's, it's criminal. Anyway, that's, I, I've vented enough. You're Thank the best. you for hearing me. Daryl, you're the best. Thank you for the call. Okay. Thanks for your thoughts. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Thank you for Thank listening. You for okay. Thanks a lot. All right, there you go. Simple as that, guys. You want to call, the perfect call from Daryl. Uh, all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, like I said, like I always say when she calls and when, when all the rest of you call, look at all the amazing smart people. Like people are awake out there. People know what's going on. And like I said, like to say, to suggest that, uh, you know, that there's a vaccine fund doesn't mean like it's everybody's going to die. That's not what I'm saying. Please, algorithms don't misunderstand. It's long been known that many vaccines have uh, side effects, uh, actual uh, deaths even. And there's a there's a fund set aside exactly for that reason. <sighs> Welcome yep. back, Cash. Sorry. And and a, and a lot of governments they pass laws uh wash like basically protection like hey, if it goes south they they have protection you can't you can't do anything about it. you can't touch them they've passed laws in a lot of different countries and i i read those and i was like wow that's pretty gnarly <laughs> and and yeah there are special laws in place um the pharmaceutical industry is the biggest lobbying entity that's ever existed in all in all of human history so they're throwing the most money at, at um at the government and i remember trump up, oh, orange man. I I said it. You said Ooh, it. Now you've I done it. it. Now you've oh. done it. Oh, they're gonna knock. Are they gonna come in my cave? No, they didn't. <laughs> well, come. Let's see. There was, remember, you, you remember that weird video where Trump passed um, legislation uh, against the pharmaceutical industry, and he said, "I might have to go away for a while," and it was like really cryptic. As if he was scared, like they were going to kill him. Like yeah, he, he, like said, really he said, weird. I have a lot of powerful allies. I'm going to be gone for a while. Yeah, I remember that. Or not allies, powerful enemies is what he said. That's what he said. And yeah. he was like, maybe I shouldn't be doing this with an election coming up. But if, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. 
and he and it was weird it was like i've never even seen him like that so you know not not supporting him not against him just weird and you know trump said has said things like oh yeah i was in a room full of generals and i was like oh we should pull the troops out and everyone started complaining and he's like yeah i mean they love war and i mean when <laughs> when a president is that transparent whether it's confidence or not, you should listen to that right that's like it's some intel you wouldn't normally get so no way, bro. anyway great no way bro. orange man bad orange man bad <laughs> <laughs> Orange man, bad. I, I got an email here real quick that I, I to follow up that call. The, this is from uh, again from the the FOIA uh, FOIA information came in, coming from uh, from uh, from Fauci's emails. Check this out. He says, Sylvia, masks are really for infected people to prevent them from spreading infection to people who are not infected, rather than protecting uninfected people from acquiring infection. The typical mask you buy in the drugstore is not really effective in keeping out virus, which is small enough to pass through the material. In an email to his colleague, he writes this, right, as evidence on February 5th, 2020. Right? So this is, he's saying one thing, he flip-flops in the press, and he's saying this behind the scenes in email. And then he says this, it might, however, provide some slight benefit to keep out gross droplets if someone coughs or sneezes on you, right? So you see, like, again, uh, th- there's a lot of this, that, like, again, don't get me wrong. I understand the mask thing is like, it's, it's minimal. It's a minimal ask, in my opinion, right? Like, there's many more things they could have asked us to do that were worse. Oh, I don't know, like shut down your business for an entire year, right? No, like, right. Things like that. Yeah. Which, of course, they did. But, but in, in any case, it's not science. If you're like, oh, by the way, maybe just might catch like a, a a beam of light from the sun as it reflects off of the corner of a thing and then it might hit you in the eye you should wear these super special sunglasses you know what i'm saying it's like come on this is not science this this is uh this is a uh, it's theater is what it is it, it, it's unfortunate yep. it's unfortunate um yep. so okay so there's more i, I got a yeah, real quick i want to add this i want to get this stuff into the show uh and again we go we go a third hour guys if you want to hang out with us i know a uh, joe roop might be back tonight uh fringe fm is back by the way so if uh, if uh, you got to, if you guys are on Fringe FM, you'll get Joe Roop at uh, I think in ten minutes or so. Uh, I d- I didn't see him say he's back officially, but uh, cross your fingers maybe. But anyway, we do go a third hour on YouTube, Facebook, and DLive. But check this out. This is from where is this? This is critically important to what we're talking about tonight. This is a an actual quote from George Orwell. All right, from 1984. Let me find this. So many things, so many links that. Uh, talking about this artificial scarcity in this entire uh uh business of oh, wait that's the wrong one sorry sorry one sec uh here we go klaus schwab here's our saying too many links yeah exactly saying too many links i've got way too many links <laughs> let's here we go george orwell said this and i've got the link and i'll, I'll post it you guys can follow up on me this is from 1984 quote It is deliberate policy to keep even the favored groups somewhere near the brink of hardship because a general state of scarcity increases the importance of small privileges and thus magnifies the distinction between one group and another. By the standards of the early early 20th century, even a member of the inner party lives an austere, laborious kind of life. Even the inner party, he says. Nevertheless, the few luxuries that he does enjoy, his large, well-appointed flat, the better texture of his clothes, the better quality of his food and drink and tobacco, his two or three servants, his private motor car or helicopter, set him in a different world from a member of the outer party. And the members of the outer party have a similar advantage in comparison with the submerged masses whom we call the proles. Now, all of this is basically just class warfare. It's uh, it's it's layering people in groups, right? And wh- every time you turn on the mainstream media, what happens? It's all groups. It's all division. It's all, well, if you're this skin color, or you're that sexual orientation, or you make this much money or not enough money, you drive a Tesla, you don't drive a Tesla, right? You got one of them gas guzzling cars, you're a bastard. You don't belong in this world with the rest of us. We want what's right and you do not. You understand? It's all division. It's all division. Sorry. Sometimes I, I get a little excited. But you know what I'm saying, right? That's no. George Orwell. Oh, no, that's this. Okay. George Orwell. Get excited. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're, we're just, it's like, um, it's like you read that book and then you look up and there you are. <laughs> it's kind of like we're, we're slipping right, right into it. Right. And how, how did he have the foresight to, 
How did he have this right? How did he have the foresight to kind of put this all? Maybe he looked at history. Maybe he looked at all these different movements, and he was able to kind of piece it together. But that's that's pretty amazing. That's good. Yeah, stay up on that soapbox, Mike. Tell us, preach it. Yeah, I don't have to because we have Beachwood on the phone. Let's go to Beachwood. Let's wrap this sucker up. Beachwood, you're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash. What's on your mind, my friend? Hey, what's up, man? Oh, it was a good show. I was just thinking about this topic. Um, I mean, with they're just moving the herds. It is, the government's in control. With this particular topic, anything you hear, they're moving the herd. If you even fathom the concept of money, you lost. You're not even playing the game unless you're the guy printing the money. And that's a fact. At one point, it comes down to resources. And I think, I think the Great Reset, I think they got mapped out now exactly how much, you know, resources left, how long civilization can survive now with, uh, you know, advanced technology, advanced math algorithms. They probably have it all mapped out. And, uh, you know, enthusiasm is no match for preparation. You know, you can be excited about something, but if you don't know anything about it, if you're not prepared, you're going to lose. And it's about control. And there's, there's many ways to control people. Yeah, segregation works. But one of the particular things in this, now that we can talk about it, like with the mask, uh, I spray for a living, you know, paint, I paint. I have a, we have some sprayers. Um, I took a class on, you know, lead removal. I have a bunch of masks. The mask ain't going to work for a virus. It's not going to work. It might help. It, it's, it's, it's bogus. But the thing I noticed with that whole thing is there's no boundaries with that. There's no racial boundaries. There's no social boundaries. It applies to everybody. Everybody wears a mask. No matter where you're from, you got to put it on. And then the thing I found was, okay, that's step one in conditioning. The second step was make me feel guilty. I have to wear the mask so I don't get you sick. So, so right away there's fear and then guilt, fear and guilt. That's, that's the number one way to control somebody, scare them and make them feel guilty. And that's what I think, you know, the whole COVID thing is what goes on behind the scenes with like the CEOs and the business stuff. Uh, I don't think anybody's infiltrated deep enough to really know. But, you know, there's definitely an elite club. And then I think the elite, elite, I think, is there's a smaller circle than you think. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me sometimes. But the, the kid I work with, he has a, a funny shirt on. Uh, he bought it. It's got George Washington on it. And it says, uh, me and my boys would be stacking bodies right now. <laughs> I've seen that. I've but, seen uh, that. Yeah, it was funny. It's just a cool shirt. And, and, but, uh, uh, and, and uh, as, as meme... And funny and dark as that is, it also might be true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I laugh in a in a uh, in a in a dark humor way, guys. Uh, again, I do not advocate violence ever in any form, and I've said that a hundred times. I'll say it a hundred, a thousand more. Anyway, uh, we got to go, Beachwood. You know, we're up against the uh, the end here. So, final thought: while we got you on the phone, my friend. I uh, just keep an open mind. You know. There's rules, but everybody is free. And whether you get caught being free, that's a, that's a completely different story. Then you've got to deal with the consequences. But, you know, if you really wanted to, to make a difference, you'd have to just turn your back on everything. Throw everything away, turn your back on everything, and be silent for a while. And, uh, you know, we're the bottom of the barrel, but we're holding up that trash on top. So when we go away, the, the top of the barrel falls down to the bottom of the barrel. Yes, sir. But yes, that's sir. That's it. I appreciate the call. Beachwood from and, uh, Massachusetts. Thanks for all listening. Right, my man. Thanks for uh, participating. Thank I'll you for the phone call. Later. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. All right. There you go. There you go. I know Ash heard part of that, so I'll give him a second to catch up. He's on that Mars delay. Uh, and so so I think this is where we're at, right? Um, there's so much just kind of BS that's in the air that, uh, again, right, like we, we, it's clear, like literally, you know, literally the entire meme for the last five years is this. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, right? Like, like it's it's the event that made even non-conspiracy theorists raise an eyebrow. Like, wait, what? He ended up dead in prison. Oh, I forgot about that one in my list. Ah, man, I can't yeah. believe I forgot that one. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we got a couple minutes. Let's wrap this up. So, so, so where do we go from here, Ash? So w- what's the prediction for the summer? Is it uh, the ice cream shortage or the power grid? What do you think? Oof. Oof. I hope it's the power grid, man. I can't go without ice cream. You know, I think they go hand in hand. Then there's no freezer for your ice cream. I haven't thought this through, Mike. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> rock salt. Rock salt, guys. Rock salt. <laughs> All right. It, you, know, you know what's funny is we didn't even we didn't even bring up the power grid hack. That was that was ever that was you guys. Yeah. That was all you guys listening, calling in. And um, you know, I'm I'm hearing it and it's like, yeah, maybe, you know. Um by the way, real really fast, we're talking about Fauci. One of his emails confirms that he sent to one of his associates a document with an attachment called nature medicines sars gain of function dot pdf so this was in february 2020 february 1st so boom caught red-handed he knew about it he was aware of it and he was involved so there you go anyway uh uh bomb on that one but yeah man what good, good calls today guys I know everyone. I know everyone's frustrated and scared and looking around and all this crazy stuff's going on. And I'm right there with you. What's going on? You know, let's stick together. This is a place where we can talk. We can hang out. We can uh, figure it out together. We can stay informed. And honestly, I think a lot of things were tried and didn't work because because of us. And so, um, yeah, check me out. I'm Ash, the reptilian from Mars. Uh, I just released a video. Check it out. And I uh, appreciate being here, and it's a uh, pleasure to talk to you guys. Thank you, Ash. And everybody out there listening, of course, you know the deal. Uh, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void if you're listening on the Fringe FM. If you're with us on uh, YouTube, D Live, and Facebook, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. Be sure, be strong, be true. Fringe FM is back. Thank you for listening. From our Troubled Minds to yours, have a great night. back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We are here with your co-host, Ash the Reptilian from Mars, and we're still talking about the Great Reset. We're talking about all this weird stuff that's going on right around now, where with this artificial scarcity, meaning that uh, uh, suddenly it's not like uh, we, we don't have enough food to feed everybody, right? Because we're throwing like half the food that we don't eat into a landfill, right? That's what's going on. Matter of fact, uh, I, I know that there's a pig farm out here in North Las Vegas, uh, out on the east side. And I do know for a fact, because I know people that uh, live near it, and they've told me this, is that uh, in the old days, uh, before they shut down all the buffets in Las Vegas, just FYI, they were taking the food, the leftover buffet food, and they were feeding it to these pigs, right? Like, this is what's going on. And this is what I'm saying, right? Is Does that sound like a post-scarcity, or, or sorry, does that sound like a, a, a food scarcity situation to you? It doesn't sound like one to me. It sounds like a problem of distribution. It sounds like a problem of uh, sol- uh, just solving problems is what it sounds like to me. So anyway, I, I mean, and I'm not saying, right, like, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not a socialist. I'm not saying everything should be free. But what I am saying is, holy crap, we throw away a ton of fantastically fine food that n- nobody's eating. They're feeding it to pigs in some cases. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is crazy. This is crazy. All right. Am I, am I broadcasting? Make sure I haven't hit the mute buttons. Everything is good. Yeah, I think we're okay. I, th- I think I haven't screwed anything up yet, at least, well, not tonight anyway. But anyway, you get you get the idea. We're still taking your phone calls, 702-957-1037. Uh, if Ash is back or not, test one, two, Earth to Mars. If not, 
he had to step away for a sec. Let's go to Robert. Robert in Pennsylvania. Robert, you are in trouble minds with Mike, and I'm sure Ash will be right back in just a moment. How are you, my friend? What's on your mind tonight? Um, I got two things on my mind. One, the last thing's what we're talk, what you're talking about on this program tonight. But I want to talk about. You remember? Well, you wouldn't remember because you were probably not even born then. But back in the '60s, the number one sponsor of the news on three networks and a lot of other programs was cigarettes. Cigarette, cigarette, the tobacco industry. And the news shied away from reporting anything about the hazards of tobacco because of that. Right? The, only, the log jam blew finally when 60 Minutes took the, the dive and did that. Much like 60 Minutes taking the dive a, a, a couple weeks ago with UFOs. Right? That's when the log jam. So the government stopped cigarettes from being able to advertise on television. All right? Well, they had to make up that revenue. That was, that was the major portion of the revenue was the cigarette um, income for uh, sponsors. So they got the government to do something, and I think it started with Reagan. Farm, uh, drugs were, no longer, were not allowed to be advertised on television. Pharmaceuticals were not allowed to be advertised on television until the Reagan years. And Reagan, under his, you know, signed to, to allow pharmaceuticals to be advertised. And now you have this behemoth, all right, that controls our government, all right, that gets away with giving us poisons, all right? They don't take it off the market. <laughs> they allow them to have it. They even, you know, almost do no kind of FDA oversight whatsoever. And so here you got like the lady was saying earlier, here you got, when, when she was a child, there was like three vaccines that you had to have for going to be enrolled into school. Now you got dozens of them. And they want to give, and they, and, they, and, they, and they want kids to have multiple vaccines injected all at one time. All right? And that brings up autism. That brings up other problems. All right, but the biggest problem is the psychotronic drugs. All right, Th- this is deliberate. All right, you can't send when when the ultimate goal of the reset, the real ultimate goal of the reset is to eliminate at least three billion people off this planet. All right, because of limited what maybe limited resources or what they think of limited resources. All right, that's the ultimate goal is depopulation. You just can't send the military in and execute three billion people globally, right? So you do it different ways. You do it in stages. You do it with war. You do it with uh, uh, spreading diseases. You do it, you do it with psychotronic drugs. So so many of them kill next suicide or kill their parents or whatever. This is all to reduce us down to a point where we can't survive on our own anymore. Right? And, and, of course, those other things are going to come into play, too, like the grid and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but the thing about the COVID rules allowed them to separate the meat, the ones that accepted those rules, from those who resisted them. And you can bet your bottom dollar <laughs> that there's a database from scouring social media and other, other areas there's a database of those resistors. Con- so when push con- comes to shove, contact they'll tracing, know where though. to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll know where to go. Yeah, well, they've been setting this up the entire time. The contact tracing, right? Like I said, it, like I said on the news show, it's weird. It's really weird that suddenly we're so concerned in other people's medical history, right? Like in the old days, that's not something you asked about. It's like asking somebody what's in your bank account, right? It's like asking people, you know, do you believe in God, right? It's like, it's it's literally like one of those polarizing things. It's none of your damn business. It's literally none of your damn business, right? Like, fine, if we're close, maybe, but holy shit, you you don't get to ask me these things, right? It's off limits. And suddenly these things that are off limits are no longer off limits. It's like, okay, by the way, 
everybody's showing off their damn card. Oh, look, I got the thing. And here's now, look, I talked to an old friend recently. You guys know him. Talked to an old friend recently. And he said this. It dawned on me that once everybody was talking about Johnson and Johnson or Pfizer or this or that or the other thing, that it wasn't about a vaccine anymore. It was about marketing. Because honestly, who gives a damn who makes it if it's effective, right? So then it becomes this thing where you're like, oh, well, Moderna or Pfizer or the other guy, this guy, the other guy. What's the, what's the damn difference, right? Better marketing. There's better any, marketing, better connection to the government. Sorry, go ahead. And, and, and I think there's just three major pharmaceutical uh, manufacturers in the world. Exactly right. Excuse me. Um, but the only, what I'm saying is, is that area of pre-crime. All right? They, now they tag the resistors. They know who they are now. Because they, you know, they went on social media. They said, don't wear the mask. Uh, if the virus is all a clock, and, and probably they were right. But they would be tagged the resistors. They're the ones that they need to identify. If they're going to do the Great Reset, they've got to do something about them. Because they know they ain't going to take it. And that's too many people for them to manage. So they've got them probably logged in some database for pre-crime. So when, when this Great Reset happens... That's who they're going to go after, quietly go after. Uh, just, you know, you, you see what I'm going with this? Dissidents. Dissidents. That's who they're going to go after, right? People that don't play ball with this great reset. And this is all part of it. I have no doubt. Like this whole, again, and Ash made a good point earlier, and he's spot on with this, is that the great reset is a rebranding of the new world order because people are suspicious of the new world order. When you, when you put it in those terms, remember George, George Bush said the new world order, right? Remember that? He also said, read my lips, no new taxes, right? Liar all the way through. Head of the CIA involved in all kinds of shady shit over history. But now we have this, whatever the hell you know, this he was is. In, he was in, go ahead, go ahead. George, George Bush was in, was in Dallas. Exactly. With the, the, JFK. You know, the afternoon of Kennedy was shot. JFK. Yeah, no, he was there. There's yep. pictures of him there. There's pictures of him there. He was there. Yep. All right. Um, you know, it, it's an, it's a fascinating to me that there's a there's a man who sounded kindly, looked kindly, but he was one of the most evil effort men and efforts on the planet. All right. And uh, yeah. Anyway, that's off the topic. But I'm saying <laughs> it's so easy to, to derail, isn't people. it? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. They have to separate people by who will yield and who will militantly fight back. And now they have that database. That's what COVID, that's part of what COVID was all about, not just to make a lot of money for the pharmaceutical industry, but to, find, but to be able to create a database of those who will yield and those who will resist. All right? So they don't care about those who will yield, will yield again, but those resistors they care about. And they'll be watching them and they'll, be, and they'll be prepared for them easily because they know who they are, they know their addresses, they know where to go. That's, that's, the, pre, that's the pre-crime squad that's, that's about to come about. That's, that's, that's growing, that's starting to develop, they're starting to develop so they can just sweep these people away. Exactly, exactly. I mean... Uh, that's all I have to say. That's what I wanted to say, and I appreciate you. Give me the time to... Put that, you know, put my thoughts out there. No problem. I appreciate the call. Thanks for all the support. Thank you for listening. Robert, you were the best. We'll talk to you soon, my friend. Have a great night. Mm-hmm. Bye. Thanks. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, Ash, Earth to Mars, are you back? Test one, two. I know you probably heard most of that call. We're just kicking it. Third hour of Troubled Minds here, uh, sipping some beer. I've got better beer than last night because last night was god awful. Don't ever buy a um, Lone Star beer. <laughs> Uh, but uh, th- there's a lot. There's a, again, right? Again, uh, I see you guys bickering a little bit about the politicians in the chat. But let's let's be hello, let's hello. Be, what's up? Welcome back, Ash. Real quick point, you're on. Hello. Real quick point, and it's your stage. Politicians, no, guys, keep going. Their entire goal is to divide us with lies. 
So it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what they say. They say whatever they need to say to get elected. And then once they get there, they march to the McConnell or Pelosi marching orders. That's it, which is lie, lie, lie about these things. Here's your talking points, right? Here's what you say if they attack you this way. They all have these bullet point lists. And that's what they do. And that's why all of the media follows it. All the media regurgitates all the crap these politicians are saying because it's an agenda. It is an agenda piece. And don't ever forget the agenda piece is to make you hate somebody else politically. That's it. Welcome back, Ash. How are you, my friend? I don't hate the people on you Mars. You would say that, you freaking commie. There's no reason to hate the people on <laughs> Mars. The people on Mars, uh, you know what I mean? They're, they're just like us. You know what I'm saying? They might have scales and tails and shit like that, but for crying out loud, right? They bleed blood <laughs> like oh, us. It, it is true. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You're right, Mike. You know, you guys judge us so harshly up here. Just let us rule you. That's all we want. That's all. Just spend the knee. Just... Just lay down your arms. Just give in. Just let us take over. Things will be easier, okay? You know, I'm waiting for these reptilians to take over with this great reset. It's so complicated. It's so complicated. Just stay inside. Don't leave. Stop researching. Take a nap. Eat your GMO foods. Don't worry about anything. Take the vaccine. Take all the vaccines. Just relax and just slip into... Endless uh, game, oh, not Game of Thrones. Uh, what is it? What's the Hunger Games? Slavery. Just let it happen. Don't you don't have to resist, right? You don't have to resist. But I will say, like I said before, I think I think we've done a lot of resisting. I think there's a lot of, I think a lot of people are aware of a lot of things, and I think more and more people are waking up. And as our media apparatus, man, do they botch things up. I mean, before we couldn't talk about the leak, right? And now we can. And I think people are waking up to this, you know? What? Why weren't we allowed to talk to her for a whole year? You know, um, was it the Trump-itis? Was it because Trump mentioned it? We aren't allowed to talk about things? I mean, it's just nuts. And, uh, I mean, the media is, is really out of control, man. It's control. It, they. They do a disservice, and it's up to people like you, Mike, and 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 all these fringe uh, peripheries to to kind of actually get real information out. You know, and it's it's crazy. You know, we get ready for shows, we do a little research, and we're like, whoa, you know, I'm a bit surprised by the stuff we find out. You know, and uh, and and they're not reporting on it. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it, and that's exactly the thing. So, uh, again, it's up to you. It's up to us, guys. Uh, what's that quote from George Orwell? I have it right on my uh, my website, right on the front page of Troubled Minds. Let's see. Where is this thing? I like to play this from time to time because guess what? It's still relevant. Here we go. Uh, a, with a government always eager to protect you from an ever-changing boogeyman, we bring you a chilling prophecy from the past. This is George Orwell. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph, and self-abasement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always, there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. And here we are. Bickering about... God fucking damn it, bro. Yeah. Orwell, dude. He knew. He knew, man. He was a visionary. Visionary of visionaries. Because he lived through a bunch of this crap. He lived through these totalitarian regimes. He saw the bullshit lies in the propaganda and the things they tried to feed us as truth when there's no truth to be found anymore. Like, I won't even claim it. I, I fully agree it's a post-truth world. I won't even claim it. I say truth is a slippery fish, and I mean it. It depends on who you ask and what question and how you frame it, 
right? You, you could get a billion different answers for the same damn question. Just depends on how you twist the question. Know what I'm saying? Sick, man. It's sick. It's a sick world we live in. And uh, this is, again, this is not going to stop. This will continue. This is the new world order, like Ash said, rebranded as the Great Reset. And this is not good. This is not kosher. Again, pay attention, people. Pay attention. Get involved in local politics, not to be, you know, like not to run for the school board and shit like this, unless you really want to, but pay attention to what the hell they're up to. That's when you know things are going to cave because you'll see when everybody out there turns into a fascist, well, that's your first clue. <laughs> that should be your first clue. We got a phone call. Uh, we got uh, we got Joe from Florida on here, but uh, you've been away for a little bit, Ash. I'm gonna it'll give you a soapbox if you want to uh, go for it, buddy. Freak out and freak out and beat your chest and scream some lizard shit, man. That's what we're here to do. You know, you know what? I, I haven't done it in a while, and I think it's really important. And so I, I'm gonna do it for you, Mike. I'm gonna plug my channel. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My name is Ash. I'm the Reptilian from Mars. Uh, you can check out my YouTube channel and the Discord. Uh, there's lots of links all over the place. So if you look for it, you'll find it. I have videos uh, mostly about aliens. And I recently am just released a video. It's private as I work on it. Mike gave me some feedbacks, and he was right, so I'm trying to make it better. But I'm releasing a video on... Um, do aliens run this? Were we created by by aliens? And I think that might be the topic for next week. So we'll go live with that. So please subscribe. I have a lot of awesome videos, a lot of content. Um, I think I literally have a picture of an alien. Uh, so I'm putting together the Crazy Mantis episode. And I hope that after watching my videos, you guys will be a little curious. Uh, I see a lot of people talking about the alien invasion. I don't know if that's because I'm here. But I'm, if that is true, I'm flattered because that's one of my that's one of my videos, you know. So check that video out. I, I put a lot of effort in my videos, you know. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing and quite, but but I think I think there's a point to be drawn there. So check out my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys calling in. Appreciate you, Mike, for letting me come on here. And uh, so yeah, uh, about our topic, you know, we're moving forward. Uh, I sent you. A, a thing literally of uh we you know we're talking about the great reset right in our new world order i sent you a clip of of uh fauci talking about a cyber attack worse than covid19 uh crisis in the power grid so I, I get where you guys are getting this power grid thing from and it's a it's a quick reset uh clip from the great reset you guys can find it online but it's a uh God, I can't say this fucking Bond villain's name. Klaus Schwab. <laughs> Klaus looking literally a bl- bl- <laughs> schlob. <laughs> he's, he's a Bond villain. He, he talks like one and everything. He just needs the cat on his lap. And then after every sentence say, and yes, this is how we will take over the world. <laughs> yes. There will be a cyber talk worse <laughs> than COVID. The crisis will affect the power grid, and we must unite <laughs> as a human unite. civilization. Under one banner, <laughs> we will come together, and we will take all of your belongings and provide you everything you need. Everything will be okay. Yeah, exactly. Here's that. Here's the uh, the actual uh, video that uh, Ash is talking about. I just linked it in the chat. Uh, all right. So here's the thing. Uh, we got a couple calls. We got uh, we got Kelly in the chat. Let's. We're gonna go to uh, Joe first. We got Kelly. We got Jay in the caller queue. We're gonna we're gonna we got some. We got some. We got some people with some things to say. So let's go back to Joe in Florida. Joe, you're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Ash. How are you, my friend? Go right ahead. Not too bad. Uh, I got some other calls, but one curious thing I think we neglected to bring up, and it just kind of popped in my head here. But um, the Chinese just made an announcement that they were going to allow each family to have three kids. So I started to wonder if the globalists, whatever we want to call these globalists, whether they're aliens or just a bunch of rich guys with long bloodlines, if I was a globalist and I favored the United States and a democracy to get us technologically to the point that we're at today. But I'm kind of sick of everybody's, I'm kind of sick of the idea of democracy. And if we look at that example, there's uprisings all over the world from Netanyahu in Israel, who's one of our Western, you know, that we favor, um, to other countries, to Putin. There's a problem with democracy right now. And the only country that doesn't really have that problem would probably be China. If I was a globalist, 
and I just wanted to do another creature from Jekyll Island, change the monetary system, make it based on some Asian money. What would happen to our standard overnight? That could be considered a reset. But it was curious, if you did not hear that, that the Chinese government just said, oh, you guys could have three kids now. I did. Why would you have three more mouths to feed? I, Why would I, you have three kids to feed? Ex- well, exactly. So I actually talked about it on uh, on the news show uh, on, what day is it, on Monday. And so not only that, in the article I cited, it, it would also said that people in China are strapped as a result of just the conditions. And so they're like, who wants three kids anyway? <laughs> like China's like, oh shit, we're, our population is aging and we don't have the next generation to take over because our own policies have got in the way of ourselves, right? And now they're like, oh shit, oh shit. By the way, uh, if you recall about three or four years ago, they, they added it so you from the one, one child policy to the two. You could have two. Now they say, oh shit, oh shit, we... You can have three. And, and it says people in China, as far as they're aware, of course, because the propaganda, you, you never can follow it and, and be sure or, or true about it. But they're saying people in China don't want a third kid because they can't afford it. Weird, right? And that right, that right there is the beauty of capitalism because they still control their markets. Here, after World War II, you know what the result was. You had a car or two in the garage. One person was the breadwinner. You were encouraged, not penalized, for having children. And in China, they've tried to control their wealth. And while Chinese may want more wealth, which could translate to more children or better conditions, they still seem to control it. So it's a slippery slope. It's just a slippery slope. But And then, you know, real quick, and I'll leave it on this, when you hear the, well, well, you know, the sex instincts, I think about what they're doing here in this country. Again, devil's advocate. But, you know, our governor here in Florida just signed what they consider anti-LB, whatever it is. You know, uh, you know, if you identify as this, you can't play the woman's team or anything. But um, the fact that we're giving labels and this might ruffle a few feathers kind of gets me scared. You know, I'm all for doing whatever you want to do behind closed doors. I don't like to, you know, ram down my throat um, with labels, he, she, you know, when I go to work, I call everybody you people just because I hate anybody that I work with. You damn I'm people. My labeling. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just go to work. I go, what the hell's wrong with you people? Fire me today. I really don't care, you know, but, um, but that's, you know, power. We have Matt Getz down here. You know, you've got politicians on both sides. They literally should be in jail. And they're out smiling and promoting to the masses. If you and I, if anybody here listening to the show did what any of these MFers did, we'd be, we'd be at least out of a job, if not in jail. Yeah, probably we'd be in jail. jail. first before the court, before, before court came. Yeah. And these people get high on it. Yeah. You know, and then, um, you know, last point, last point. A buddy of mine was doing transcriptions for medicine. It was like late 90s, early 2000s. And he worked for some pharmaceutical companies. And he said, you could forget about cures. You could forget about cures. And, you know, I remember people going to the first Gulf War. And they got shot up with the, what I would think would be the precursors to today's biologics for immune disorders. But to what end? To what end? If there were aliens coming and there was a reset, maybe they're just going to flood this place. Like they did the first time in the ark. Who the hell knows? Who knows? It's a lot of doom porn. I just know that I got to watch out for my neighbor because who, who am I going to shoot? But that's the thing. And, you know, <laughs> sociolo- sociolo- sociologically, Bro. but sociolo- if you look at other countries, if you look at other countries, you have a middle class fighting poor people. You have, you know, most of us here in, the, in this country, we're lucky enough to be middle class. God forbid things go south. I shouldn't be looking to fight my neighbor. I should be looking for the damn politicians and lawmakers <laughs> who are going to be hiding. And of Those course, are the ones we should have the pitch. And of for. course, please put the put the uh, the uh, the disclaimer at the end of that. We don't advocate violence yes. in any form I mean, at any I, time. We, no, please no, no, say I, it again. I, please say I, it. I, I I really do not advocate violence. I do not advocate violence. But violence in the past of this country 
I have to put a butt in there has been a possibility. I'm not saying I'm the one that's ever going to start any of that. You know, I've got kids, family, most of us do. But you've got to be well damn prepared for a mob that's going to come down your block. Because while we may not do it to them, they're certainly going to be okay with it happening to us because there will never be enough police and safety to take care of the rest of us while we're getting looted and robbed and everything else from some mob because that's how stupid we are. That's how stupid we are. We should be looking at our lawmakers. Okay. Exactly the right. fact that there's lobbyists, it, it's real simple. The fact that there's lobbyists just tells me that legislation is for sale. I mean, it's not obvious. Legislation's for sale because that's why lobbyists exist. And I don't have enough money to change the laws. I don't have enough money to tell people, hey, let's fire up the pipeline, but let's try not to sell the gas overseas. Let's keep the pipeline on this continent. Okay? <laughs> hey, we got food. Hey, Bill, maybe Bill Gates should have owned all this farmland. Okay? Because that's a national resource. That goes back to my first point. If there's globalists, if there's a big reset, yeah, we are the only country that's got a lot of bullets. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a funny thought. You know? The reason I was no. laughing, I want to before before I let you go. Uh, I had I had a funny thought. Uh, the thought was, you said I can't afford to buy the politicians, and my, my thought was, senators are cheap. Now, look, if if <laughs> check this out, imagine if we started a crowdfunding campaign to buy a senator. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you, you're right. You, you, you know what? That's a great idea. We would be doing Wall Street bets. We'd be doing Wall Street bets. We should. You're right. We should and, go bother some moron and say, hey, how come you're not listening to us? It's perfect. And you buy them off. You got to buy them off. Joe, you're the best. I appreciate the call. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic night. God, God bless you and the family. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> I'll let you know when the, right, the GoFundMe goes up. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Excuse me. That's just too funny. That's just too funny. Uh, b- well, because of course, right? Uh, like, think about it. Uh, how many senators are in the bag? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. <laughs> how many senators are in the bag? All right, we got Kelly. We got Jay. Let's go to let's go to Ash first, though. What's up, Ash? You got comments on that? You want you want to help crowdfund a senator? Let's buy a senator, man. It'll be funny as hell. Beep. People are fed up, Mike. That's what I'm getting from tonight. People are fed up with everyone's crap. They're getting so bad. They're like, you know what? What works in this life? You know what? Lobbying, right? We can crowdfund this. We can take Dogecoin, right? We can make millionaire Doge. Doge. We can make Dogecoin millionaires overnight. Who's to say we can't crowdfund a senator? What you know, senators? These politicians. <laughs> I just they should, I heard I, the, I, I got in a private message. I'll throw a hundred on it. <laughs> so we can, we can first yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> if that's how it works, okay, that's how it works. Let's do it. Let's run some let's run some Wall Street bet scams and let's raise the money. Let's do it. That's I'm I mean really tears crying gonna, over here. That's too funny. Yes, you know, I I heard something. Politicians should be like NASCAR drivers. They should have to wear. They should have to wear jacket jackets with their all their sponsors on them. That would change the world real fast. Can you imagine Fauci up there? If you're ever in a government official building, you got to wear like like all your funding on your jacket, right? So there's Fauci telling us, you know, oh, I don't think it was made in a lab. And he's got a freaking Wuhan <laughs> sticker right on his chest, you know. And it's it's freaking huge. <laughs> exactly. We got we got Joe in the chest. It's like I got a hundred and a legal aid stripper on it. <laughs> so we we're uh, so we're already we're we haven't even started a GoFundMe. And we got people pledging <laughs> to buy your senator. Amen. Yeah. A lot of a lot of politicians, as we found out, were controlled by by definitely by strippers and prostitutes, <laughs> but not quite exactly by them. <laughs> By the evidence of the event, how many how many politicians over the last two years got got caught doing like cocaine and like having gay orgies and stuff? Did that there was like three of them. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, three of them. Yeah, uh, the guy like, in Florida, I think. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it, like the, th- the just the thing is, it's they're controlled by. Um, powers above themselves and that's that's part of the point here it, it's a little bit crazy so uh, yeah <laughs> maybe we should dude maybe that's the way we go viral as we crowdfund by a senator and uh, i'll bet you people that have never heard of us would be like fuck yeah i got a hundred on that <laughs> they were like marco rubio you owe us a favor <laughs> 
we could trigger oh, that, the that, campaign. We, yeah. <laughs> then we just buy real estate with it. Isn't that what you do? You just buy real well, estate. No, yeah. What you're, yeah, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to lie. You're supposed, uh, any, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. That's yeah. the part of it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Matt, Matt says, OMG, uh, let's get our own troubled mind senator. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sponsored by uh, so before i uh i uh present this legislation i would just like to mention that i'm sponsored by uh, uh troubled mind and ash the reptilian from mars, <laughs> the reptilian from mars. <laughs> i think that's what we need to do man I, th- I think i think the vision is clear i always wondered what the point of all of this was right i knew we had a point but i think it kind of kind of came to that point tonight uh i knew we we're it, getting into politics it, 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 it i said it earlier shot. it might be worth the shot uh let's go let's go to let's go to <laughs> kelly uh, kelly what's up buddy can you hear us <laughs> Uh, let's go. Let's uh, let's ask Kelly what he thinks is the uh, the best the best senator to buy. What's up, Kelly? You're on Trouble Wines with Mike and Ash. How are you, my friend? What's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Go right ahead. Well, what's going on, guys? How are you guys doing? Oh, having a good time, man. <laughs> yeah, what's up, dude? How you doing? Welcome right. to the show. Um, that's kind of funny, but they, we we shouldn't even have to be thinking about that. They should already be. The thing they should be losing is their job. Exactly. Trying to earn. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Como kill like 16,000 people <laughs> or something like that? And they're, they're still talking about it as a presidential candidate. <laughs> what is it? What does it take to lose your job in politics? God damn. Exactly. How many people? Is it like 20,000? Was he just, he's just under it. I think hey, he's almost there. Yeah. It's gotta be yeah. a threshold cutoff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a threshold. Oh my God. <laughs> It's twenty thousand. They're like people. everything is cool well, as what? long as you don't murder twenty thousand people. Well, once you get past twenty thousand, it fuck- it's a political calamity. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I thought know. it was fucking one, Mike. I thought it was <laughs> yeah, exactly, one. exactly. What happened to one? <laughs> what happened to murdering one person was a crime. Sorry, Kelly. We're we're stomping all over. Hey, go, go, ahead, sir. Bad, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, sir. <laughs> I think Florida uh, mayor is probably going to go for that right now with uh, releasing all those deadly uh, mosquitoes. He's going for the title. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I heard, yeah, that's. I have to look into that. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. There's you guys talking about this reset, the great reset. I mean, I've seen some videos people put together. Well, I haven't yet. I kind of saved them. I haven't really looked too much into that. But you know, it kind of sounds like it's also uh, the, you know the new world order just kind of renamed, like you guys are saying. But it's kind of weird. It's, I also look at it as, you know, a bigger picture, too. You know, why? Why are these CEOs stepping down? You know, like, why are these, um, these uh, so, you know, powerhouse couples, they're getting divorced. They're, like, actually just kind of, you know, there's theories that they're just kind of splitting the, you know, the, the business and, you know, trying to keep it within themselves. But, yeah, it's a new one that they came out with. But what's interesting is, yeah, is, is, it, is it a global thing? Is it a, what, a supernatural thing, you know, as a universe? Is it going to be like a sunburst or what, you know, scientists call like the, you know, a micronovas? You know, we kind of, I kind of talked about this uh, briefly on one show, but uh, it, it, you can think about it by like, there's, you know, they're building all these, all these uh, governments are building on these like underground cities. We know they're there. You know, and then you hear these other like, uh, small town country or you know sit towns and stuff in these rural countries and like you know the midwest they're hearing these booms you know is it probably you know them building these you know underground cities underneath them that you know they can't hear or see <clears throat> you know i kind of ponder that because you know if they're if they have you know they have tons of satellites out there you know you know around the sun you know soho and all that but uh, they also around the earth, you know, they they know that this, you know, that there's going to be a global uh, a catastrophe. I believe that it's like, you know, the, the the whole sun, they're claiming to even not only that the pole shifting, but the whole planet is might even tilt. I know there's evidence of all that, but <clears throat> if that's the case, you would you would believe that, you know, they were trying to the safe one of the safer places would probably be underground. If something like that's going to happen, you know, you see that in like Darren Kuyu that was over in Turkey, you know, that ha- they could like house thousands of people, you know, 
you know, farm animals and everything else. But, you know, maybe it's it's going to happen again. You know, they're just, somebody's telling them and they're getting ready for it. You know, or, or they're like, you know, maybe they're heading to space. That's the next thing, too, you know, because you see all these rockets, you know, and these every, all these countries are are launching rockets. They They can't all be satellites. I don't believe anyway. That's my theory on it. I don't believe that there's going to be, you know, that it's all satellite systems that they need to replace up there. You know, I, I know there's a, a life, you know, there's a, there's a life cycle for everything, but I, I don't know, man. For me, I, there's there's thousands of rockets that have li- lifted off this planet, and they're not all doing satellites. Yeah, you're, you're basically saying, like, you're, you're saying we've been in the dark for so long. We know so little about potentially what what could be happening underground bases aliens um uh the stuff we're doing in space the catastrophes our ancient history there's so much that we is not privy to us it's not shared with us that god it could be anything that's going on right and and this could be just a small fraction of the things going on and and we're trying to make sense of it like like um yeah, yeah. You just, you know, we're trying to make, we're trying to like look at the breadcrumbs and see the meal, right? They, they just, they just, you know, we're just the leftovers, and maybe this is all part of, uh, you know, wrangling in. Maybe they've been a breakaway civilization for a while and now. They're just finally being like, okay, we need to do something about these people because they're like ruining the planet, and now we need to like reel them in, you know, and implement a system. And maybe, yeah, man. I don't know, man. That, that, that's the thing. They're dishonest, right? They have, they've never been honest with us ever. It's never been the case. So why would it be the case now? And 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 if it's been that way for so long, God only knows what's the fuck's going on. Yeah, <clears throat> we're not even. I mean, I'm not even including like you know. Let's, I'm trying to. I'm I'm trying to put it in perspective. Not even like talking about UFOs or anything. I'm talking about like a you know, supernatural events, you know, like, that happen, say, like, the sun, you know, how, you know, the whole Great Reset, right, and you're, you're people are talking about this, and, and it's correct that, you know, they're, they're going to be used in different ways, like, like Robert was saying, you know, like, different waves, you know, like, you have war, you know, they're going to talk about vaccinations, because Bill Gates already said it, you know, we can you know, probably bring the population down by a couple million if we, you know, do birth control, and, you know, have vaccinations and shit like that. But how do you wipe out, you know, like the Georgia Guidestones, you know? How do you wipe out billions of people at one time? It's got to be a global catastrophe. It's either one of those things, and they're getting ready for it, I believe. Because these governments, I mean, they've, I mean these stories about governments going underground, is, is you know, it's, that's not a new story, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and that's that's exactly the thing. They have those huge, like, gigantic, like, miles deep underground bases for a reason. And it's not a conspiracy theory. That shit is real. Like, there's different places. There's, like, that, that one mountain, right, in, uh, where the hell is it? Is it Montana? It's somewhere in the, in the, in the, just the middle of the country where there's this giant mountain where it takes, like, 10 hours for the door to open, right? Things like this. The door is so massive. These places exist. Like, they're, they are ready to go in case the shit hits the fan, right? The proverbial shit hits the fan situation. And guess what they're going to do? Guess what they're going to do? They have a continuity plan. And who does it include? That's right. Not you and not me. That's who it includes. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, well, that sucks. Those MFers out there, they took the brunt of it, and this is really terrible. Time to, gonna close the, time to close those fucking doors. <laughs> close the fucking door. <laughs> close the, sorry, guys, it's going to take in eight and a half hours to close this door. <laughs> like, well, get going, get going. <laughs> Overdrive. <laughs> yeah, man, right? I mean, this yeah, stuff is man. real. This stuff is actually yeah. real. Yeah, because if you also, and, and this, not, it's, this is not, this is not, you know, theory at all, too. You can look this up on YouTube. If you go into, like, um, cold food storages, right? That, that, these are all in, like, you know, the Midwest uh, states and stuff like that. You know, they they have cold, uh, cold. they ca- claim to have cold food storages. And these guys, you know, these, uh, these semi-drivers, you know, they put a camera on their dashboard as soon as they, you know, the door opens up and they drive in there. And this shit goes... It's it's right. They just go on for miles. You know, the camera sped up. First, they, you know, do it slowly, you know, where they have to turn. 
And this is like great giant salt pillars, it looks like, you know, at one time that, you know, that they're just using these salt, salt caves, I believe. But yeah, I mean, all these old giant food companies, they own all this shit, you know? And then and that's how they're, they, you know, that's, they claim it's food, food distribution. But, I mean, they could grow shit down in there, too. That's not the only thing. The, they're having some kind of shit that's down there. But yeah, and it was interesting, too, is you have a comment from uh, Biden. And he says the people that haven't, it's either get vaccinated or pay the, pay the price, right? Or the ultimate price. I don't know. Some kind of shit like that. But I don't know. Maybe it's, it's you know, I'm, you know, trying to go, I'm going to go down this, this rabbit hole. Okay. So if, if that's the case, say some shit like that, it does happen. And they already know that they can track you by the vaccination, right? Maybe that's the, that's the golden ticket to get into these underground shit because you listen to the government you know, and not was one of these people that, like, I don't know, some of us that are, you know, that listen to, uh, you know, the show, but, you know, that is, that that believes in, you know, the right for freedom and all that shit. <clears throat> but, you know, they, they want their little, uh, you know, their little, their little slaves that they want. You know, if you listen to what we have to say, we, you know, we'll scan you. And if you got, you know, the metal that, that was inside the vaccinations, we can scan that. Boom. You got the golden ticket to go inside, you know. But this incoming planetary, you know, destruction where it's going to wipe out, you know, billions of people on the earth. Well, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. You know, I don't know. What else could it be? Well, OK, so so again, kind of in, in the vein with the show here, I, I don't want to go too too doom preacher. Right. I don't want to go gloom and doom too much. We got a great question in chat. Let's talk about this for a second, boys. Uh, Michelle in the chat says, so how do you think we survive in America? We all make personal choice based on info coming at us at the speed of light. But how do we stand by each other based on personal and financial decisions? And I think that's a great question. Thanks, thanks for the question, Michelle. Thanks for listening. I, th- I, and I, I think so. I think at some point, right? Like we're we're kind of laughing at ourselves and you know talking about some doom and gloom and some other things, right? But I, I but I think part of it is uh, just being active, right? And uh, I'm I'm going to go and then I'll give you guys the, the take here and uh, to maybe to answer this question because I think it may be the most important question of the night is what can we do? And I joked by the senator and you know these other things, but but clearly that's that's not an option because you need like a, basically an unlimited source of money. You need like the the dark money going through like the the foundations of the <clears throat> you know like the Clintons and things like that. And you know we we don't have that. You need the o- the offseas overshore accounts that you know that uh, dodge the taxes like the what was that the Panama Papers. We don't have that. Like, even if you crowdsource money to buy off politicians, you still can't get what you need. Because, of course, you're not Oprah Winfrey. You're not Bill Gates. You're not George Soros. You're not, you're not the people that actually run this joint. So even if you're able to crowd, crowdfund and move markets like they did at Wall Street Bets, um, I just don't think, uh, I don't think the will of the people will be heard. I don't think so. But I do believe... That on the other hand, if you stay active and you understand what's going on in the government, that if eventually something happens that is so far off the path that enough people will stand up, it can happen. Look at look at what happened in Hong Kong. It can happen. They said uh, China put in the extradition policy and said, look, we're going to be able to extradite dissidents from Hong Kong to mainland China. And they stood up. Millions of people hit the streets and they stopped working and they stopped doing everything. Everything because they opposed this bill, which was radical. It was disgusting. And it was clearly a violation of human rights because they knew what they were going to do. They were going to pluck the most vocal opponents of mainland China into China itself. And those people were going to disappear horrifically, probably. And those people stood up and God bless them. And no, you know what the the crazy part about that is Uh, still back to that conspiracy theory of uh, why uh, maybe this came out of China when it did right now. We've got the lab leak hypothesis is legit. They say maybe they released it to get those people off the streets in Hong Kong without butchering them. Huh? Huh? All right. What do you think? What do you think? Let's go. Let's go to Ash. What do you think about all that? But again, remember, let's be positive here. Michelle wants to know, like, how do we make these choices? How do we how do we uh, we do we do these things uh, to kind of be positive with each other in America? Uh, Let's look forward and um, into the light out of the darkness. How about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's true. It's uh, this stuff only really works at the end of the day, no matter what they do. 
there's going to be people left, right? Whether it's all of us, some of us, you know, there's going to be people left and they have to control them. And they, and they need to know, they need those people not to know that they did it, right? It's kind of like the guy who steals your dog and sells it back to you, right? He needs to make the money. He doesn't want you to call the police on him, right? So uh, at the end of the day, we need to stay vigilant and, and, and not get lazy and complacent. You know, these people have been going behind closed doors and meeting in the woods and meeting in caves and all this crazy shit and, and having all these meetings. And, and we need to hold these people accountable and, and, and keep aware of things. And so, you know, if, like with, with Fauci, a perfect example, we talked about him earlier. You know, okay, COVID happened. That sucked. You were fucking involved. And we, we're going to keep, we're going to keep pointing. And that's what needs to happen. Like these people need to be, there needs to be a fear, right? And they're, they, they can't be behind so much bureaucracy and so much stuff. They're, they feel like they're safe. You know, if, if they, if they, if there's a fear there, if there's repercussions, then people might not do things. And so, yeah, we have to stay dil- diligent and uh, we have to stay together and not get, not get separated, divide and conquer. That's a classic thing. And let's, let's not, let's not, let's not fight each other guys. Okay. We have plenty of other people we can fight. We can fight. We can stay together. We can hang out. We can stick it to the man together. So okay. that's what I have to say. And so you, so, good so point. you use the word fight. Can you give the disclaimer about violence, please? I just want to make sure we're clear uh, on the algorithms. Uh, but I, no, I do not warn any violence, no uh, violence. A, at all. No violence. Except the reptilian kind when we come and we invade. Different. When we take over. Totally different. Yeah, completely totally different. Because yeah, not, not with humans, though, yeah. It's not, not, not fighting it's all pure love. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. Got pure you. Pure love. Pure love. No, no, no. Look, that's the thing, right? Again, like, like the the politics. Again, kind of like we said on the news show, with the Jeremy Corbell's allowed to say, "Oh, by the way, I'm not stopping on the UFOs till the bodies hit the ground." Right? Can you imagine if Donald Trump said, "I'm not stopping until the bodies hit the ground"? <laughs> they would still be freaking out. They would still be losing their damn minds. Anyway, Kelly. <laughs> how do we stay positive in this man how do we uh, how do we look out for each other how do we look from the darkness into the light well first off you can't really try to run from the darkness you got to understand it to you got to you know people it's like a stand and fight you know you you can't run from it it's always going to be there so you can't just run from it and have it constantly chase you you got to stand and you know and face this thing. That's the first and foremost, right? You got to demand and put these politicians, uh, the people that in, in, that voted these people in in these states. You got to understand the, you know, that they voted them in. So how do you kind of fight that? You, that's kind of the hard part of, about it because you know if they're voted in by their own people, but their own people have got to demand that they live by these words that they, you know, that they preach the whole time, you know, on their on their, you know, on the road to their victory. You know, they, they just can't just be like, oh, okay, they're in, and then, you know, everybody just bitch and moan about it. You got to, I've seen where some states where they, you know, stood up and they demanded that these people, uh, you know, get replaced. And that's what they need to do because it's tiring already. These people have been sitting around in there for like, what, 30, 40 years? That's ridiculous. They went in like, what? Let's say they were lawyers. A lot of them are lawyers or whatnot. And then they get into politics. Okay, then they become uh, multimillionaires. How in the hell is that possible? You know? But to stay positive, yeah. Like, uh, I was kind of going to put talk about this, too. Is um, For me, it's a, like for my personal and my professional life. You know, that's what the military that, you know, that I, I had, too. And that always, you know, it always tells me to be ready. You always have to be prepared and try to be prepared for everything. Everything that around you... That's in your happening in your daily life, you know, like I go in sometimes, you know, me and my wife talk about this is like, you know, sometimes I walk in and I don't know, it's just, I don't know if that's ingrained in me through my military, you know, career was, I walk into a place and I, you know, I, I, it's not being scared, it's being prepared. Like I'll, I'll look in there, I'll walk in there, like how many exits are uh, in there? You know I mean? When I go in, you know, how many people are in there that you notice, you know, workers or whatnot, you know, I just, I just tend to do that. You know, in the back of my truck, I have what they call, you know, when I lived in, I always had it when I lived in California. It was a bug out bag where if there was a an earthquake, like the big one hit, 
you know, I even I told my ex-wife and when this got my you know my my kids and stuff. I, you you had wet, you had east, right? You try to head east as fast as you can away from the water because some you know you're gonna have a, a ton of water coming in from there. Or if you have the earthquake, you know, you, there's some ways that you have to you know try to get out of there. We were even talking about setting up like I don't know um, like a like a caravan out in you know in the Arizona desert where you have. You know, like uh, you could just pull up with your truck and you know haul it away. You know, you can like a camping thing. You know, so you can like an RV or something. Have that jam packed with some stuff. Like, yeah, I you know I bought MREs, but yeah, you have you have to have a plan. And that's what I was saying. Like the power grid and like the internet goes out. Half these people in these in these cities would probably cause madness and chaos would happen because they don't know how to understand how like you know even opening the can of food or anything you know what i'm saying that ain't even going to be around you know people don't know the old ways of uh, living you know that's that's the that's the that's the thing they want the, everybody to be dumbed down away from that people you know kids don't even know like what a, uh, what certain vegetables look like you know and they're trying to get that started again yeah. so yeah that, that's <laughs> Like, like, like no, somebody said in the chat, they, they bought a book to find out which weeds they could eat <laughs> just yeah. to be prepared. I mean, <laughs> you know what? No bullshit. I bought a book that says, you know, what plants you can eat. Yeah. That, that's you know, the bowl that's in the forest. You got to know that because if not, you're going to, you might eat up something that's going to kill you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I'm laughing, but, but I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's sick that we've come to that, right? Like what, which plants can you eat safely? Which bugs should you eat? <laughs> Things like this, like, holy crap, man. Uh, but, but, but you're right. You're right. Be prepared. I think that's the thing, right? Uh, like, 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 okay. Don't be afraid is the first thing. Just don't be afraid again. You know, like, uh, what's, what did you, what, what's your, uh, your quote there, uh, Kelly, that you say from time to time, the reason we shouldn't be afraid, right? We're, we're like bags of meat, uh, on a rock that's like shooting through the atmosphere through the universe at like 44,000 miles an hour or something like that. Do you remember that exact quote? No, I don't remember, but yeah, it's the exact same thing. We're just, uh, you're just riding, uh, you're a uh, you're a sentient being riding a, a meat curtain and just floating on a uh, like a rock through the galaxy at uh, I don't know like light speed. I don't it's it's you know and that's what it is really. Kind of really can't take everything too serious because there's there's so much you know you have to pay attention to what your governments are doing of course right you you got to know you got to know you know especially when you get older like when you're younger and that's I don't know most kids you know they're they're not into that you know they don't even want to talk about that shit but they have to. Because these are the people that make the laws. And they make the laws with certain wording. Just like, you know, being a doctor or a lawyer, you have to know. It's like a different language. It, and, and it's meant for that. They are not. They don't want everybody to, to understand. Because, you know, even if you put like a certain, a certain, you know, certain wording in the sentence, right? That's how they're going to get you. But, yeah, just being prepared. You got you to, gotta, you know, try to, I try to be world, you know, world-rounded, you know. And and that's the thing, and to help your neighbor, that's one thing you can't. You can't if, when the shit hits the fan. You can't. Everybody can't just freak out, man. You gotta you gotta calm calmly take care of what's going on, you know, around you. Yes, there's gonna be some chaos, but you gotta deal with that as well. But and on no doom and gloom. It's just always. It's just again always being prepared, prepared for everything and anything and that's you know that's in your hometown or even whatnot, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just part of being alive, being a human being, right? You, you got to be aware and just be be ready for a crisis because you never know. You never know when it's going to happen. But don't be afraid. Look wide-eyed into the light and uh, make the moves that are most necessary. But being prepared doesn't hurt. The bug out bags, the extra food in the house, the MREs like you mentioned. An MRE, for those that don't know, is uh, called meal ready to eat. That's from the military jargon. And they're like those little dr- uh, dried, uh, you know, uh, freeze dried foods in those little bags. That's what that is. Like, like be prepared for that type of stuff. If you can, if you have the means, be ahead of it. Don't be behind it. You don't want to be the guy that's trying to shoot your neighbor for a glass of water, you know? Like, that's that's just awful. So so anyway, we, we got to finish this up, Kelly. So final thought, and then we're going to go to Ash, and then we'll, we'll do the outro with Jay, because uh, I'm pretty sure he's got a quote with us. Oh, no, that's uh, just one want to be, you know, just talk about some stuff, and uh, you guys, everybody, have a good night. Oh, but one thing I do want to add, too, was that, like I was talking you know, the whole narrative they're trying to say that it came from, uh, yeah, it did come from uh, China, right? It's not only because that laboratory was in China. And, you know, the reason why, because there's, you know, the laws are so lax there. But there's a thing, like I was saying, it's called the TRIPS Agreement. 
I have posted the first five pages in Discord. I, it's a 45-page document, and, and if anybody wants the whole thing in there, it talks about it. It talks. It's uh, what it is was a race to patent as the SARS virus, because they, they want to patent it. Yes, it's it's, it's going to be any kind of stuff like that as biological weapon. It's a biological warfare. But yeah, it's called the Trips Agreement. It was you know, made from China, the United, the UK, and the United States. Oh yeah, and, and Fauci was all part. I'm pretty sure was had his hand his hand in some of that as well. You know, because they want to have, you know. He was a virologist or, you know, shit like that, too. And he was running some pretty crazy labs. Oh, yeah, Gates, too. All those people. You got to keep your eye on that stuff. But be vigilant, people out there. Take care of yourselves. And don't be scared. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Tell Michelle we said hi. All right, let's go. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Ash, and then we'll, we'll go to Jay. We'll go to the outro with Jay. Go ahead, Ash. You're up. And then, uh, Jay, you're next. Hey, guys. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's. <laughs> hey guys, nice. you sound like a damn thought about your girl. grandmother. <laughs> yeah, have you thought about your grandmother lately? Well, don't worry about her. I have a product for you that'll make your thoughts go away. It's <laughs> it's, it's it's big made government. By Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just inject this, okay? And you don't have to worry about it anymore. This work, the stress. No, no, actually, um, yeah, the great show tonight. You know. Uh, we we were struggling to kind of pull it all together, right? Because there's so much going on in the world, it's nuts. And if if you uh, guys, if you're seeing it, yeah, it is nuts. Okay, it's not it's not you. I know we're we're, we're smaller and smaller world, right? You, you know what happens. You, you, now we know what happens in Uganda, and like you know wherever you are, we're we're becoming a smaller and smaller community where you know about more things in the world. But there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now, and um, if you're still listening, if you still have a troubled mind, this is the place for it, where we can talk about things, we can think about things, all different backgrounds, people from the military, people from funeral homes, all sorts of stuff, right? And and we're all seeing sort of the same thing, and uh, so great conversation. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. Lots of great calls. Um, appreciate having having me on. We were going to do aliens again, guys. I I was trying to do aliens. And then, you know what? I'm the one who said, right? Like, I even, I was like, you know what? Fuck the aliens. Let's, there's some shits going on. So, you know, when I'm rather talk about that than the aliens, then you know some shits going on. So, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, don't, it's not doom and gloom, uh, a, a quick update. The, the meat's going to be back. I think it was supposed to come back like tomorrow. So they're supposed to be back online. Maybe, maybe it's our own stuff, hacking our own institutions to make sure they're ready to go in case, you know what I mean? It's, it's not all bad. So as we move forward, enjoy your family, enjoy the time with your friends. Thanks for calling in great conversation. There's more people like you. And again, I really appreciate you guys tuning in for this whole time. Um, or, you know, if you, if you're just listening in the third hour, you skipped everything. I mean, that's kind of cool too. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. I'm Ash, <laughs> the reptilian from Mars. Check out my channel. Uh, we're talking about aliens and stuff and, uh, peace. Have a good night guys. There you go. Appreciate it. Ash. Thanks for, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to Jay. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you later, Ash. If you want to cut, we're good. We'll, we'll, we'll kill the outro without you if you want to bounce. Uh, all right. So, uh, so let's go to Jay. Sorry to keep you waiting, Jay, because you know how I love to do the outro with you. I'm pretty sure you got a quote from me, don't you? I, I do. Okay. Um, Before we do that, though, let's. Uh, let's I don't want to cut you short. What's on your mind? I got time for you, my friend. Just like I was not expecting the show today. I mean, we've been steering away from the conversation that's been going on tonight for quite a while, and we're throwing it right out there. You know, this stuff that came out with the FOIA request and everything else like that. You know. It's just really, I I don't even know how to go about saying it. It's just like you got caught. I remember getting cut off of the show right when you got on the fringe because they dropped an F bomb saying that same thing. You just got caught. (laughs) <laughs> you got and we know it <laughs> yep, yep well I, I i threw an expletive in there and that was my second one when you were first starting off on the french and i didn't know that was against the rules that day 
Yeah, I gotta gotta set the tone, you know. Like you gotta make an example. Well, and you step. I, up I understand. For the rest of us. <laughs> I definitely understand. I got fired from a job when that when I was like twenty, you know, because I didn't get it. But whatever, you know. It, it's just. Yeah. I mean, at, we're at a point now where you just gotta fess up. We know you been bullshitting about the. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say on the show anymore, you know, because like yesterday it would have been a completely different tone of conversation. <laughs> exactly. But all this stuff came out today <laughs> that, exactly. well, actually now I should be allowed to talk about it because Facebook redacted their fact checker thing on it and all that, this, that, and the other thing. So now we're allowed to talk about it, but you know, six, eight months ago, we got taken off the air for doing it, you know? Bunny show. Yeah. That whole thing maybe goes on with bunny show. Yeah. You know, well, wait, she was right. So you just screwed her and cost her. I mean, you guys probably don't really make a lot of money doing your blog and thing like that. You know, it's I don't make any money. We don't make any money. We don't make any money. <laughs> Zero. Uh, well, but right. I mean, but it, you're not losing as much as you would be. That's true. You know, that's true. Be- thanks to you guys. Thanks. Thanks to the support of the, the good folks out there. They're helping us pay the bills for the phone line and the podcast hosting and other, other costs that go into this show. So yes, you're right. Just saying for the, for but, the people out there that believe that we're, we're here uh, running a scam to make some money. We've been in the hole for three years. Just FYI. It's not like that. I it's lost. Not, it's not, I like lost that. like a, yeah, I lost a grand just to get my, my some of my shit started. I have <laughs> made dick. I've just lost money. But, yeah. but again, don't get us wrong. We're not bitching about that. Just saying, like, if, if there's a misconception out there, you think, oh, these grifters are out there just milking the money off of the scared people. No. <laughs> no, not at all. Not even remotely close. Sorry, Jay, go ahead. You don't go to the bar to hang out and make money. You go there to spend a little bit of money and have an intelligent conversation, you know? Exactly. With people, you know, I mean, that's one of the awesome things about what's going on here. I mean, you can bring up werewolves and why they edited your show halfway through is beyond me. But something, you know, just let's get a bunch of intelligent people here. We're going to try to stay focused on the topic and we'll wean in way our way back and forth from one side to the other. But we're having an intelligent conversation about whatever it is, you know, whether a two by four is better than a four by four in the corner of the house, you know, (laughs) whatever. Stupid. No, you're right. You're right. right. An intelligent conversation. People, intelligent people talking to each other will breed intelligence. You know, you'll say something to me that will spawn the thought. Ash will say something to you that spawns a thought that says something that you say that spawns a thought to Beachwood. Exactly. You know, the it's same way within the crypto. It's a network. You know, Dr. Devious makes yes. a little funny thing. Yes. You know. We are connected. There's a network. There's a neural network that's larger than just our own brain. And if you get the information out there and you jog people's memory to things they may have forgot that are important, it's, uh, it's what we do. It's why we do this. It's literally why we do this. So, so it's not, uh, trust me, there, there's a movement here. There's an actual movement here. And it's just, hey, look, be free. Do you. I was all willing to hop on the bandwagon and go in with the, what Daryl was talking about in Beachwood and the masks and, you know, things prior to the virus that I know and everything else like that. But, you know, we covered all that already, you yeah. know. Yeah, definitely. We, 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 we you know, we done got the wool pulled over our eyes. Exactly. And now we know about it. And now and now we're dealing with it. We're dealing with the repercussions. Ash, like I said, if you want to hang, no problem. If you want to cut, you're good. Uh, Jay, uh, hang tight. Just a moment. We got a phone call coming in. I know we're over time, but this is the thing, right? This is our show. We're off the radio. I've got a phone call right now. So hang tight, Jay. We're going to go. We'll do the outro with you still, so don't go anywhere. Uh, let's take this phone call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute Jay, and we're going to take the phone call and uh, see what's on the mind of this individual. All right. Uh, I'm, uh, I think the first time caller, you're on Trouble Minds with Mike and Jay and Ash. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Tim from Fullerton. Tim, what's up, my California. friend? California. 
Right on. California. Not much. I fled California. Holy man. cow. <laughs> What's on your mind tonight? This is friend? crazy. Because I, list- I was just listening to your previous podcast from Transhumanism. You gave out the number. It's the time of night. I said, well, I memorized the phone number. I didn't even write it down. It took me like three segments to get the number down. And then I dialed it. And now here I am talking to you on, I have no idea what we're talking about, but <laughs> I just uh, love putting my voice out in the air and actually like just saying hi to you and just want to say, I love everything that, uh, this whole community is bringing around right now. This is such a good vibe in the air of this whole community finally starting to come together and saying what the hell is going on. And exactly right. You are in the right place, my friend, because what the hell is going on? But don't forget, we're not doom preachers. We're not trying to tell you the end is nigh. We're trying to, not trying to sell you meteor juice. All right. We're trying to say, be aware Understand what's happening around you. Be a concerned, engaged, engaged citizen, and be prepared for what might be in the future. Uh, where'd you find us, my friend? Did you find us on uh, YouTube or somewhere else? Uh, Spotify, just down the rabbit hole on Spotify. Actually, I looked up Pizzagate, and then I just started clicking on everybody who talked about Pizzagate, and now I follow all of those people. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, we, we, we try and dodge that one because it's not allowed, but uh, <laughs> I understand. Okay, I'm sorry about no, that. You're good, you're good, you're good. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, so so we're talking about the Great Reset tonight and just being prepared. Uh, and any thoughts on that? Because we're, we were literally just about to finish up, but you called. So so uh, we're going to take you as the final call. Well, thanks for taking my here. call. I hope to be a, a continual caller from now on. Maybe one day we can co-host because, man, I got some stuff to talk about. Sure, bro. You know where to find me, Troubled Minds Radio at Gmail. You can join our Discord. Go to troubledminds.org. The Discord link is right there. I'm easy to find. I'm not dodging people. Love everybody's input, so thank you again for the call tonight. Oh, one thing, yeah, Clyde man. Lewis, man. It would be great to hear Clyde Lewis's voice. If you can get him on as a coast sometime, I don't know what happened to him. His whole platform went down. Maybe he's trying to do his own thing. I don't know, but it would be great to hear Clyde Lewis's voice again, just back on some free radio. They just took him off the radio. You can find him at, this is not a commercial for Clyde Lewis, but you can find him at aftermath.fm. So if you go there. Uh, yeah, uh, that platform's shit. It is I don't shit. know. It, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, Sorry again. No, it's okay. Uh, so, 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 you know, uh, we are syndicated on the radio, so... Uh, when you've called in the third hour so we can say shit and fucking piss and all we want, but most times, please don't Hell curse. Yeah. Most times, don't curse when you call a shit. I will. Just, just FYI. Just just throwing it out there. I want to make sure that we don't get uh, taken down for any... No, I apologize. Questions. You're good. I am sorry. You're in the third hour. We're good. Tim from California, pleasure to meet you, my friend. Thanks for listening. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for the call tonight. Uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for we taking do. my call. We'll talk again. Hey, bro, we, we do 7 p.m. Pacific, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so uh, call me tomorrow. We'll talk. I like to deal in the uh, past and the present rather than the future. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, we have a good all. night, man. I love what you do. You guys are great. Uh, we'll talk again. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Tim from California, you're the best. Uh, there you go. First time caller. There you go. Randomly dialed the phone number and we're live. How about that? <laughs> How about that shit? All right. All right. Ash, any, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts before we go to the outro with Jay? Test one, hello Earth hello Mars. am i here you already had a final did I, thought did but, i make uh, it yeah you made it but uh we had a phone uh, call so it was a first time caller that just dialed the phone number on a whim and we were live <laughs> yeah, all, he, i don't even I know get, what you're talking about i loved about. his excitement he, he was genuinely like ah mike i'm on the radio i watch this show <laughs> exactly he's like holy shit i'm on the show what just happened that was pretty cool that's cool man that was hey man, cool. thanks for calling in. A great, thanks for having great enthusiasm. And yeah, I agree, man. It's it's a cool community. We talk about cool stuff. We talk about everything. You know, We're all, all up and down the spectrum, making weird ass connections from the Anunnaki to the underground bases to like Clyde Lewis's fucking Bond voice to <laughs> to, to you know to, to all this stuff. And these are conversations we should be able to have. So thank you for joining, and uh, it was an awesome call. Cool. 
Good, good shit. Good, good shit. Power. Good, good fucking shit. Good shit. Power to the people. All right, let's do the outro with Jay. All right, back to you, Jay. Uh, I'll give you some time before we uh, smash the outro music because I know you got a great quote for us as we finish. Go right ahead, sir. I, I do, but it's like the you got the smartest people on the planet calling into your show, man. I mean, really, you do. It seems like it. It's huh? just. It seems like it. We got a good community here. Good vibes. It, 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 it's always an unbelievably interesting conversation. You know, there's no animosity or anything towards each other or anything else like that. Someone brings up a point, someone might have a rebuttal. It's it's nice to have an intellectual conversation with other people, you know? And I think that's one of the really cool things that's going on with the show. And I know we're late, you know, if you want me to just read the quote and go, you know, I will, I would like you to give a little bit more credit to brave new world. You know, you're kind of pushing George Orwell there a little bit. You know? You're right. Uh, Fahrenheit. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got you. I got, we got, we got some things, we got some things we, we can talk about too. It's uh, uh, the reason I do Orwell is cause he's my favorite and I know him the best. So I'll brush up on that other stuff and we'll, we'll add that to the, to the mix. Just, just, but for you know, well, Orwell did the, the war of the worlds, man. I mean, you know, they oh, broadcast no. on the radio and oh, people no. freaked the shit out. That was Orson Welles. That was a different, different guy, different guy, but, but you're good. Oh, well, I got that wrong. I'm good. Damn That's why you got me. I was wrong. That's why you got me. Um, no. You got me to back you up. But okay, let's go. I'm going to play some outro music, and you're going to tell us this quote. What is this quote that you've got? You want to preface it and uh, give us the give us, give us us the deets. What is this thing you're about to tell us? No, there's not much to it. You know, it's just like you can change the world if you just change your perspective. You know? Think about things a different way a little bit. You know? There you go. You can... Change the world, one little person at a time. You know, help somebody up, pick them up, pat them on the ass, send them on their way. Yes, teach sir. them how to potato. You know. Yes, sir. Teach them how to, you know, plant potatoes and cook fish. You know. If you have not tomorrow, do something productive. Put it on your calendar and. Uh... Yeah, learn these things. Start learning these things if you don't know them, because uh, there may be a time that comes that we need them. Jay, thank you for being part of this. Thanks for the great quotes. Thanks for the great uh, time hanging out with us. Thanks, Ash, for being here tonight. I appreciate you helping me out on Wednesdays. It uh, takes a ton of pressure off. Uh, doing it yourself is, um, for so many nights in a row, it's, it's a lot of pressure. I appreciate it, Ash. It, uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, thank you for uh, your input and all that good shit. Let's get the F out of here. What do you say, brothers? sisters and everybody else that's out there reptilians <laughs> exactly right <laughs> exactly right thanks guys as as we end you know the deal we'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m pacific time thursday night on the fringe fm which is back by the way joe roop is back tonight which means the fringe fm has been down uh but uh, seems to be back up and running and it'll be better than ever because well we're there we're there you guys are the best be sure be strong be true Thanks for listening. From our Trouble Minds to yours, have a great night. Bye, y'all. Good night.